Hello, everyone here who's coming. Um, <coughs> going to start with the emergency evacuation announcement. I'll read. Please note that this meeting will be audio recorded. Should we be required to evacuate the building, would you please leave the room by the door to the fire escape staircase? Please hold both handrails in case the stairs are wet or slippery. If anyone is unable to use the stairs, would they please allow others to exit the room before they go to the fire escape door, where they can then be given assistance. Our assembly point will be in the public car park at the side of the Civic Suite. Please do not delay your evacuation to collect, and collect any belongings. Please do not return to the building until given permission to do so by council staff. Thank you. Apologies for absence. <coughs> We've had um, councillor Drain, councillor Hazelwood. That's all. Um, Non-members attending, we have councillor McPherson and councillor Mountain. The minutes of the meeting held on 3rd February 2015, is that everyone Okay, if I sign those. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. That is done. Thank okay. you. Um, to receive declarations of interest. I think perhaps I should declare an interest that I'm a member of Rochford Housing Association Board. Mm, that the, um, I, I think personal interest, that's all. Yes, um, please, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The same. Yeah. Right. We now move on to item five, which is um Entitled title is, and I'd like to thank um, Emma Pegan for coming from Rochford Housing Association. We did invite some other people, but they haven't turned up, unfortunately. Um, which is Genesis <coughs> Housing Association and also St Mungo. Mungo's who, who do work with the homeless in the area. Um, we, the idea of this is we're just trying to find information, find facts, find what we do, really. So. It's, it, it shouldn't be too hard, hopefully. I think we are going to start with Councillor Glynn. Thank you very much. <coughs> um, I have a series of questions, and, I, and I'll go through them so you can write them down, and then I would like an answer at the <coughs> end of, of the lot together. Are the questions to And like they're to, the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, to Joe and to the other lady there, who I don't know, that's unusual. My question to do with homeless is, how many properties in the housing associations have temporary accommodation that are available for homeless situations across the area? Meaning, how many have you got that are all uh, available at short notice? How much of this temporary accommodation is based in South End or Basildon? On average, what period are people in temporary accommodation for? Does the temporary accommodation supply have facilities for people to cook? How much does it cost to put somebody into this accommodation? How much does a district pay towards the temporary accommodation? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Black. You're looking at me then, well, I'll just stop right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Actually, would it be if you just went from the, did the first one one at a time, maybe it might be easier for them. What? Would it be easier if they, we did, did one at a time? Well, no, if I do the lot, then they can come back and give an answer to the lot. So, so, and then so I remember. Oh, right. The other thing is, how much does the, if the district have to pay towards the temporary accommodation, and does it come, yeah. or does it come from the people's benefit? We're passing um, them a copy of the. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you're writing. Okay. What arrangements are made if children are involved to allow them to continue to as attend their normal school? 
does the person in temporary accommodation have to pay for their own heating and lighting? And if so, is it by a meter? They're my questions, and I know, I know there's others from elsewhere. Can we take them one at a time? Yeah, we we'll take them one at a time. I think it might be easier. <coughs> um, and I think they're to both the, the, they're both to Rochester Street Council and to Rochester Housing Association. No, I think that was question six through to thirteen. Is that correct? No, yeah, um, it's question three. They have copies of the questions. I think. Sorry, Councillor McPherson. Thank you, Chairman. Could I just say it would have been quite helpful to have had these questions prior to the meeting because we won't have all this information. Some I thought some of them were pulled in yeah, prior to the meeting. Yeah. Um, I don't. Some think of them were. Yeah. I don't think they were. Some of them were. Right. Um, actually. I received five. I think. Yeah, yeah. none of okay. the ones that Councillor Glynn's just Right, that's right. okay. Um, apologies, I, I thought more had been, but yeah. um, some questions would have been arisen tonight from our discussions before the meeting as well. Obviously, if you can't answer them, we, we, you, you can come back, but we'll, we'll see where we can go with them. So I assume three, question three has been provided already, for instance, <coughs> around do you provide any temporary accommodation? Yeah, um, and, and I think it was that one we can. I think the question beyond Jess was probably being looked yes. for as well. <laughs> I think, um, yeah, from my perspective, we were given questions one to five mm -hmm. beforehand, so they're, yeah, they're okay. the ones I've prepared. Yeah. But, um, but I think all I say is the questions would intend to give a flavour of what yeah, we'd that, be asking. That's absolutely as well. fine. Yeah. So, so I think the councillor's uh, question started at number six how many properties do, um, do the Housing Association have um, available for temporary accommodation? So, at Rochford Housing Association, at the point of stock transfer, when we took over the stock from the council, there was an agreement that we would supply a certain number of units for homeless accommodation. And that is eight fixed units. So there's six units at Hatfield House on East Street in Rochford, obviously the council previously owned, and they're a mix of one and two bedroom properties. And they're all self-contained. And um, then the council have availability of up to six other units that we have, so they can be any size anywhere within the district. So overall it's 14 that are available. What I would say is that um, we also make available other properties if they come up and they're not suitable for us to let on a permanent basis. So to give you an example, we have a unit at the moment that would have been tied accommodation for a scheme manager. We haven't replaced that position. We don't have residential scheme managers appointed going forward. So that property is now vacant. It's not suitable to let as a general needs property permanently or family accommodation permanently because it's attached to a sheltered scheme. So we've made that unit available for temporary accommodation. So that's all the flexibility that we've got. Um, yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, in addition to that, about this, um, there may be others because obviously we've only just um, looked at the temporary accommodation. Um, Genesis have got nine. Um, Swan has have got three. Um, Napro, which provides single accommodation, have got three, and Century House has got one. Okay. How, how long are they in that temporary accommodation? Are they in there purely for two or three weeks or are they in there for months? Bearing in mind that you do have a housing, a, a, a list of people that are looking for, uh, of the housing register. So uh, these ones that you say you've got available, are there across the whole time there are always at least one property available at, at any time? Um, right, we're, we're to answer, um, I don't have the statistics available of how long people are in there, but it will be months rather than weeks. Um, I would, well, I would say that's a, a figure that the council will have because it's, you're, you obviously have the statutory duty to homelessness. So I can't give you that figure off the, off the top of my head. It's not something that we would monitor. Um, I'd say it's really a, a council responsibility because you have the statutory duty. Um, but um, is anything available at any time? Well, at the moment it is because um, the council aren't using their full quota of the six flexible units. So um, at the moment there would be um, accommodation available. Um, potentially under that agreement. I suppose what you need to then think is we don't have properties just sat around waiting for people. So if we were to give you one of those six flexible units, that obviously would mean that that's someone who couldn't permanently be housed. So we would, you know, it's a, it's a, a decision then the council has to make whether they want to nominate someone temporarily or permanently to a property. <coughs> Chairman, we can yeah. uh, provide that data to the group. Yeah. Um, obviously, um, depending on the size of the family and their needs, some are in there longer than other families. Mm. 
<laughs> and the other question I had asked was what happens about children going to school and the, and, and the costings of being in the temporary accommodation? So um, who, um, is it up, still up to the parents? Do the, is there any assistance in taking children to school if they moved outside the area, for instance? John, would you know? Otherwise we'll pass that back. So we, uh, again, we, yes. can, we can provide that information. Uh, I, I don't think that should be too yeah. difficult. Um, and, and indeed, um, the, uh, the costs of uh, temporary accommodation are, are, are reported through the budget, but we can, we can provide information, uh, some detailed information on that as well um, to the committee. Through you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, sorry, I was trying to work Can out where I we just were say that the questions I've asked, is it possible for you to give answers for that to all of us in writing? Uh, so yes. 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 Oh, yes. 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 yes, that's um, not a problem at all. And also, the, I mean, I, th I think it's the costs, <coughs> how much does it cost to put somebody in temporary accommodation? I understand there could be things around storage of furniture and things like that which they may meet or we may meet temporarily. Um, so information around that as well. So where we're asking about how much does it cost, it would be ancillary costs as well, not just the physical cost of paying for the accommodation itself, but also ancillary costs around yeah. Yeah. storage of furniture as well. If they have some, I think that's what you meant as well, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, antique <coughs> people as well as um, family. But I think, I think the other question Councillor Kim was trying to get at is, um, where are asked uh, um, how much of this temporary accommodation is based in South Barra, she said, but it, what we're referring to is that some people also put into bed and breakfast accommodation. And is that on a contract basis? Is that just an ad hoc basis? Or do we have contracts with the people? And whereabouts is that B&B &B accommodation based? How much is in the district? How much is in yeah. other barrows or yep. districts? Um, Chairman, I haven't got the exact figure. Yeah. Some are in the Rochester district, some are based outside, mm. but we can give you a full analysis of that as well and the costings for each. Yeah, thing. I think in the past you have as well. Yeah. Is it a. Yes, okay, um, good. Yeah. My colleague. Yeah, I think. Um, did you want to leave off next? Well, I can do if you like. Yeah, yeah you've more or less crossed what I was going to say because obviously we don't know what you're going to say. But. I feel confident you're going to come back with an answer. The first question is, is there a register or record kept of all persons who apply as homelessness, um, regardless of whether you give them homeless uh, you know, accommodation, so if they come in and move elsewhere? So do you keep a record of all those people? Um, and two, do we, these are the questions, the two, do we have a, well I know some of it, but do we have a Rochford District Council strategy or policy to deal with homelessness under the Homeless Persons Act? Question three, what did the local, localism bill, I don't know, what does the localism bill change, if anything, in relationship, in relation to homelessness? Yeah? I think you'll find it's number 16 on that list. Even yeah. though we only have one to five, yes, thank you. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you just have a list of one to five. Uh, and also, what are, the key, what are the key stakeholders of Rochford's homelessness prevention strategy? Okay. Um, are, shall I give them? Um, yeah. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yes, there are records kept of everybody who applies um, for homelessness. Um, obviously, if they meet the criteria and we've got a duty of care for those people, then we look to be home. Um, uh, we've got a homeless strategy which was recently revised, so that has probably taken into account localism bill, but um, I'm sure Shauna um, correct me if not. Um, that has been circulated to all members, but I can have that circulated again to this group. Um, what was um, localism bill? Um, Chairman, it's localism act. But I'd <coughs> okay. be grateful for yes. some advice on the particular yes. uh, the particular clause in the localism act that uh, the committee might have in mind in respect. It was a bill of, uh, when we started. It was a bill when it started. Yes, yeah. and I said bill as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Richard, did it change anything? Well, uh, would you like to? Um, what, what part of the act do you think yeah. um, has? Impacted on well, I don't know. That's why I'm asking. I'm not, I'm ch chairman, I'm not sure whether it did, but we, okay, can, we, can, we, can, check, we can check that. Yes. Uh, yeah. um, and who are the key stakeholders? I appreciate you've got the housing. Um, is there anybody else involved in? I mean, for example, do we have groups going out? 
homeless persons, and if we do, what do we do with them if we buy them? That sort of thing. Chairman, I, because because I've, I've written down a list. So uh, you know, in terms of the, the people that the local authority works with on homelessness issues, we work with. Uh, the registered providers, obviously, we work with the Citizens Advice Bureau, Family Mosaic, NACRO, private landlords, extended schools, family solutions, Essex County Council, the police. Uh, we work with women's aid and refugees, and we work with other local authorities. I mean, I don't know if that's a definitive list, but you know, there's a, a long list of uh, you work with Hall? people that we work with uh, in relation to homelessness issues. No, Hall? no. Hark current lead to live in South Yes, I know. Yeah. Um, we've actually commissioned St. Mark Mungo's. St. Mungo's, yeah, which I've, I've um, heard of. Our homeless. So that'd be on the list as well. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think perhaps one of Councillor um, Law's questions was around do we keep a record of those who are homeless? I think I'm not, I just want to clarify the answer. Um, do we keep a list of people who come in and say that they regard themselves as homeless? Or do we only keep a account of those who come in and say they're homeless and we agree are homeless? A good question and a good nuanced difference yes. between the two. I believe we keep a record of all people that approach the council. That's part of the statutory duty. <coughs> okay. But I can I can advise the, the, the committee on the details okay. of that. Okay. Sorry, Councillor. Could, could I add to that, Chairman? Um, that obviously there are people who do not come to the council at all and do not declare themselves as homeless. Yes. And we actually actively engage and work with the police to try to identify those people within our community as well. Because yeah. I think that was also something around which mm. Councillor Orm was asking if we could have a count of rough sleepers, or which again in itself you start. I understand you can start getting. It, is some, when he's run someone a rough sleeper or not? I don't know. Um, sorry, Can I just briefly come mm. back? And um, your answer was that people, you do know when people have come in. The number of times I've been in the main office in Rochford and people have come in and asked about being homeless and that, and their, ne their names and addresses are never taken. They're just told, uh, 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 go off and do something. And it's, it's not just once, it's on a regular <coughs> basis. It doesn't seem as though there is enough um, in the outer office for people, to, the staff, to know um, what to do. Yes, Thank you. Councillor McPherson. May I say, Chairman, if any member has witnessed that, and these are vulnerable people in our mm. community, mm. why have they not scaled that up? Why have I not been made aware of this okay. before now? That would be my answer to that. Okay, so something well, I've said about members. it. Uh, now. Yeah. No, I've said about it before. Not to me. No, but I have to other people. Right, if okay. you could let me know after that, Chairman, then I can take yeah, that up. Can we arrange for that? to yeah. happen so we can deal with that because I think it's really important. Mm. Um, <coughs> sorry, Councillor. I've, I've got a question that kind of um, it, it's not on the list but it, but it, it comes from what Councillor Gim was just talking about. Um, could there be any, any instances where people who um, present to us as being homeless are moved on from Rochford to maybe Southend or Basildon mm -hmm because we can't help them for any reason. When you say we can't help <coughs> them, if they meet the criteria, then we have a duty to help them. Okay, you've, you've answered the question, duty. Um, do we, you know, does anybody ever, ever escape the, 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 the net? We say we've got a duty. That duty is to identify and assist. Is it is it not at all, is it a possible at all that someone could could just slip through that piece and we say, well, actually we can't do anything, um, we don't have this, we don't have that, you know. Um, so maybe if you went to South End, or maybe if you went to Basildon, you you'd be better off. I'm not making you being accusative. I'm I'm just thinking. Look, um, we know there's a duty. Do we have a do we get it wrong? Do we get it often wrong? Um, would you like to first? Well, well, well I, I, I mean, I, I think the, the <coughs> issue the issue here, uh, 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 I think, is is related to uh, whether or not the council um, takes action to deal with, on a temporary basis, someone who presents as homeless, until such time as it's determined whether that person is intentionally homeless or whether through some some other uh, uh, um, qualifying arrangement the council has a duty to house that 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 person or that or that family does that does that make sense which is why 
Um, some people, uh, when they present themselves, they will be put into, into, into bed and breakfast or then temporary accommodation until such time as that assessment is, is carried out. Does yeah. that make sense? Yes, I, it is. And, and I think uh, probably what happens... I'll tell, you what, I'll tell you why I'm raising it, OK? There's, there's anecdotal evidence popping up, you know, which in my hearing, if you like, not individuals beating their way to my door and saying, oh, look, Rochford, you know, a thing like that. There's a feeling in the larger towns that people from our area are, are ending up their responsibility, yeah, the responsibility of South End and Basildon, rather than ourselves for some reason. Mm. And I've just po I just posed that question yeah, right. in that way, yeah. not to tease it out, yeah. but to ask it politely. Yeah. I suppose I have to ask it more directly than I thought I'd have to. Yeah. That's, um, uh, thank you, Councillor, that's um, uh, perfectly acceptable. But I can tell you of one case that we're almost convinced Southend has got a duty to home this family. We are still ha housing that family, rather than them be out on the street and then we are looking, investigating it. If Southend are found that they should have um, been housing that family, they will be footing the bill. It sounds like there could be football here. And that's, you know, kind of where, where I think I'm hearing that people are being, you know, shunted from pillar two. And I think that's what maybe Councillor Glynn has maybe heard. I don't know the reasons for it, but it seems to be, that sounded like an example of that. Um, well, do you want to explain the criteria about whether well, we have a duty of care or a neighbouring authority? Ch Ch Chairman, if anything, I, I'd suggest footballs are coming in Rochford's direction. Yes. I, I think my feeling is that um, some authorities are um, asking specific questions of people who present themselves as uh, as homeless and they're making um, very rapid judgments about whether or not they should um, uh, intervene um, and are sending those people uh, away and suggesting they go elsewhere. I think that's my, my feeling about the situation. Uh, and, and they often end up at Rochford. I know I'm hoping this, this question, yeah. but I suppose it is mine. Yeah. Um, have we got? Have we thought of trying to uh, quantify that in any way? In in because we keep the records of people whether they qualify or not. Is there a, is there a way we could actually try and capture you know some of that that's turning up in Rochford that shouldn't? Well, we should be able to, um, and apart from that, um, without, um, you know, uh, obviously bearing in mind data protection, we could provide a couple of case studies. Okay. I'll leave yeah. you there, Chairman. Thank That'd you. Be good. Okay. Um, Councillor Butcher? Yeah, I'm, I'm getting a little bit confused with <coughs> some of these questions and what it exactly <laughs> is I want to ask. Um, is there a way of finding the numbers of those that are homeless through domestic violence, those that are rough sleeping, those that are sofa surfing, and perhaps ev evicted um, through non-payment of rent. That's number one. Also, with those that are declared intentionally homeless, and that could be for a number of reasons, I know, is there any, although they're intentionally homeless, they're still homeless and they're perhaps still our residents and they found themselves in difficult situations or whatever. Is there any support given to those after it's been declared that they are now intentionally homeless so we don't have that duty of care? And is there any support given to those who have more difficult problems, like those released from mental health hospitals, um, and those released from prison are, you know, in custody. Do we and want to come back to their um, the, the district? Do we have that extra support for them? Yes, want to provide it? Well, I mean, I, Chairman, I, 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 clearly there's a, uh, as I suggested, there's a long list of partners that we work with. So uh, I mean, I, I guess in the right circumstances, we would seek out. Uh, support where it was uh, appropriate to do so. I mean, I think the key reasons that people become homeless, as I understand it, are, r relate to losing private rented accommodation, and that's a particular challenge at the moment, given the high rents that it, uh, uh, we, we're experiencing in this part of the country. Through um, a family or a family member asking someone to leave a house, 
or, or actually friends asking someone to leave a house. You know, those seem to be the key reasons why uh, people um, uh, become, uh, be become homeless. Um, and the, 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 the issues that uh, I think Councillor Butcher m mentions are, are I think, uh, um, quite rare, but nevertheless, in the appropriate circumstances, if it was uh, something that uh, Rochford uh, w was involved in, we'd, we'd look to see what support we could, we could provide. Wouldn't you regard someone who may be having to sofa surf as homeless or not homeless? It's whether they've come forward and declared themselves as yeah. homeless, to be honest. So it's um, hidden homelessness. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Which we do try to proactively go out and ask. Yeah. Um, can I sorry. just sorry? Can I just just add one point actually? Um, just around um, evictions. I suppose just to give some assurance <coughs> to, to the committee that obviously the housing association. I speak, I'm sure I speak for the other housing associations that operate in the district. Obviously, one of the things we really believe in is about sustainability of tenancy, and we will try to do everything to sustain the tenancy, but it's not always possible. But just to uh, to say that um, in 2013-14, we didn't evict anyone at all. Um, in this financial year, we've uh, affected three households, one for antisocial behaviour, it was someone who um, previously was in supported housing, then moved into mainstream housing, it probably wasn't appropriate for her complex needs, although obviously that was the recommendation at the time. She then um, assaulted a, a neighbour, she was imprisoned, and, and that's why she lost her, her tenancy. Um, and two people have been evicted, two households have been evicted for rent arrears, but that's unusual. Most years we have evicted either nobody at all or, you know, one family, something like that. So I'm sure, I'm sure I speak for all registered providers that we try not to add to your homelessness duty by evicting lots of people. We try to work with partners to sustain <coughs> tenancies where we can. Sorry, um, sorry, could Councillor Mason want to come in? Please? Yes, please. <coughs> it was to follow up on Councillor Butcher's question. Um, in terms of people that are sleeping on floors, I, I think the term sofa, you know, surfing. sofa surfing is a new one to one to me tonight. And I thank Councillor for, for, for that. Um, and of course, there are there is a phenomenon elsewhere <clears throat> of beds in sheds. And um, I'm the chairman spoke of hidden homelessness, and. My question is about have we ever tried as a council to find out the extent of people that are sleeping on floors, the extent of people that may be s sleeping in sheds, or there are family circumstances where they do sleep in outbuildings. And um, to that extent, um, if we've surveyed them and we know the extent of it, can you tell us? And, and what we do to support them. Okay. First of all, um, I would say that because I actually volunteer with the deprived community in the Rochester District, I know there's sofa surfers out there, but they do not want to declare themselves as sofa surfers and they've chosen to sleep around their friends, um, family members, um, those sort of circumstances. Sometimes we cannot make people come forward. Okay, We have got a very <coughs> strong voluntary community. I'm not so sure that I know of anybody with um, sheds. As in sheds. As in sheds, mm -hmm. yes. Um, again, we do do it each year. We go out and we ask if anybody <coughs> knows. And we reach as many community groups that we can possibly reach. Um, but Perhaps um, the, the review group could come up with some suggestions of how else we could go out to mm. groups. That would be um, a wrong. Okay. <coughs> yeah, I don't think there's an answer to this, but I'm, I'm a little bit concerned about the one person that has been evicted for antisocial behaviour for biting their neighbour or hitting their neighbour. Of course, I can understand why they should be evicted and um, for the antisocial behaviour and being imprisoned and, and whatever. But that's the sort of person that I get a little bit concerned about because they obviously were in supported accommodation originally because they needed it. I would suggest perhaps, I don't want to talk about individual services, mm -hmm. but maybe some mental health issues there. Put into general accommodation and it's not worked. Mm -hmm. Would there not be any, is, is there any support for then having them back into supported accommodation? Because they're still 
a resident in our district. Mm -hmm. As a council with a conscience, I would suggest councillors would want to support that person yeah. and in, in some way. What they've done is wrong, but but is there anything that we can do to support somebody like yeah. her? Well, I believe because the, the supported accommodation in this district is very limited, so I believe they are in South End. They will be working with, um, you know, we obviously worked with the, um, the, the relevant social services teams and they will have probation involved. So um, I understand they've got into, um, you know, appropriate accommodation in the South End area. Now. And, and, and that's what concerns yeah. me. Could we, I would like to see some appropriate accommodation in our district for our residents that have those difficulties. Mm -hmm. And as I said, we, I was talking about it, those being released from mental health hospitals, mm -hmm. that perhaps we don't have the supported accommodation for them. And I just wondered whether there are any, any plans um, for us to be providing some supported accommodation for those people that do have these difficulties. But I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I would say from, from our um, point of view as a, a developing association in the district, we would look um, to the council really to say this is where our priorities are. Um, you know, um, for them, for us either to approach them when we have a site or when we have um, a scheme in mind, um, but certainly for them also to come to talk to us if, if there's specific schemes that they're looking for. That's something that we could accommodate. Um, you know, Sanctuary does ha has a, a whole supported team who develop and support accommodation, so it's something that we have the skill to, to deliver. It's then about availability of land, availability of uh, appropriate locations, the will of, of the local authority to support such schemes and, and things like that. So I think it's about, is there a need for it? Is it something politically that, that you know, people <coughs> want to support? And then sort of making sure that the appropriate um, providers um, you know, are, are there to supply it. We're obviously not the only um, association that does specialist No, so actually that, my, my, my comment or question was not particularly directed at yourself no. because um, I think there are other organisations yeah. that available. I think it's about saying there is the expertise yeah. there. I think you know, we would just say either when we've got money available we would come to the local authority and ask what they're looking for or we would refer to your strategy to see sort of where your needs are. Thank you. Did you want to say something? Thank you, Chairman. I was just saying, um, obviously, we've only got the one housing provider here, so there yes, are unfortunately. others to investigate. But that might be another thing for the review to look at. Is there a need for supported mm. housing? And if so, can it be included in future developments? Thank you. Um, I've got four more people who want to speak, so we'll see how that yeah. goes. Um, Councillor Capon, then Councillor Norman first. So, for Councillor. Okay. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, I think Councillor McPherson makes the point very well, the fact that we cannot force people to come forward with the best thank will you. in the world. We can only offer the services, and if they don't come forward or they don't class themselves as homeless, there's nothing more we can do. Thank you. Um, two questions. Firstly, have we got any specific policies around um, youngsters leaving foster care? And secondly, following on from Councillor Norman's comments regarding the Localism Act, I just quickly Googled it, and apparently the only thing it involves is um, asking the private rented sector to work with authorities. So I don't know whether the council yeah. wants to yeah. expand on that, or, or indeed you do. Well, that's quite a handy thank you, Mr. <laughs> Capon, because yes, we are. Um, I have to say, um, our housing officer, who's um, unfortunately not here tonight, um, he has been working with private um, uh, landlords because as um, Sean explained, um, the um, private rental is extremely high. So well, he's been working with some land, um, landlords and also looking for some of them rather than them going to te families going to temporary accommodation. We've actually been paying their deposits up front, which has still worked out more economical um, than putting them into bed and breakfast, but also better for the families, which is the most important thing as far as I'm concerned. Um, sorry, the, um, the other question for teens. Oh, sorry. Obviously, as part of my role, I sit on the um, Children's Partnership and we work closely with the leading and aftercare team. Um, and we have had families before where um, the young person's got to over the fostering age and the family hasn't wanted to know them. And yes, we have worked with the, those young people to make yeah, sure. Yeah, I thought you might know from the, sort of the other parts yeah. of your portfolio. Thank you, Andrew. 
Right, Councillor Norman, three quick Thanks. Things. Yeah, it's more of an interest, really. And I don't know who to aim this at, but uh, it's really a housing thing. Two questions, but uh, <coughs> thanks for the question about the, um, the Localism Act, uh, because private tenancy, I'm looking at the PSL, the public sector lease area. I'm assuming you would work with that, do we? Do we have public sector lease? Where we, get, we, we take on as an authority people who own private houses who want the authority that we used to do that do we not do that um we um mm. uh, i i know uh, sorry chairman we we advertised this um going back now long before i had the portfolio and i think there was ilch take up wasn't there okay yeah i'm not aware of that, you, know. <laughs> you haven't got any published no psl at all we, we don't have yeah. okay don't that's fine mm. no sorry can i just ask a question about that. You said we did advertise it. Do we still advertise um, it? Uh, it was um, um, well, as long as my interpretation of it is the same. It was where if there was private people who wanted to privately rent out their additional accommodation, their houses, etc., they could pass it over to a social housing landlord who would return it to them mm -hmm. within a set period and um, the same mm -hmm. condition. And there was no take up. Okay, is that still available to do? Um, it is still available. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you, if, yeah. Because that's an ideal thing for homeless, it's really good, it's short term, isn't it? Well, no, it isn't short term, that's isn't the thing. Mm -hmm. They have to sign it over. Well, the property. Okay. Mm -hmm. that's, mm -hmm. that's fine. Yeah. Well, you've problem. answered that question, if I think. And the other thing is, it's, a, it's a, uh, an interest, really. Um, how does the, the homeless situation, you say that they're there for a limited period, as per need, and that eventually some go because they're not fit, or you know, they don't fit the criteria, or you move them on. How does this affect our a waiting list, if you like, of our normal housing list. Because these people coming in, they're jumping the queue, they come in, in a word, they're jumping the line, they're coming for reasons, I'm not knocking the reasons or arguing any of that, but they come in, they jump the queue, people have been waiting for years, then eventually they, you say, right, they are homeless, as we do, we have the duty to accommodate, they're only in this in a temporary accommodation, what do you do? Because that must affect the list, and I'm just interested to know how that works. Of course it affects the list. So because you, after we've got people will be waiting. on that list for years until we have affordable homes to yes. accommodate all those people okay. on the list. But can you tell me, that's the question really, can you tell me how that is affecting the list in terms of our housing stock? I mean, is it a problem? Is it just one a year? Is it all the time? Is, how does it affect that list? Can you, can you give me any idea at all? Well, clearly, um, you know, anybody that uh, is assessed as uh, uh, that we that uh, assessed so to, to so that Rochford has a a, a, a duty to, to house those people, they may very well then jump to the top of the list. So you know, the the more people that are presenting and assessed uh, uh, in in that way, then the, the less likely it is that someone that's on the list is going to get uh, is going to get accommodation. You know, I mean, that's the way the process has always worked. So I just want to move on a, um, quite quickly. Oh, I could suggest that the people who have been made homeless might have been on the list, but further down it anyway. Potentially. That may be the case as well, um, Chairman. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, um, can that information be provided in any detail, or not? Is that something which is very subjective? We'll give it some thought and see what we can. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, I'm, I'm conscious of time. That no, no, I'm just interested. Um, I mean, I'm, yeah. Councillor Burton, then Councillor Back, and then Councillor Seegers, and then we have a visiting member who wants to ask a question as well. So um, go in that order. Yeah, just there's a couple of new phrases that have come to my attention tonight, like sofa surfers and beds in sheds and things. Um, the answers that you've given, it seems to me that we as a, well, as a council are aware that there are a lot more homeless people in the district than statistics would like us to sh what would show. Not, a lot, not necessarily a lot more, you're assuming a lot more, you just, sorry, I just want to... Well, there is more. Yeah. And as a council, are we confident that we would actually have enough accommodation in the district if everybody wanted? You know, if all those people that we've, we've tried, you know, you were saying that we've tried to approach them in the past, if they were to turn around and took up our offer, are we confident that we would actually have enough accommodation for them? Well, I don't know. Should that be something that, it, that we have a plan? It, the answer is the answer is no. If 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 members turn their attention to the council's strategic housing market assessment, it will demonstrate that uh, there is a substantial uh, 
uh, need for uh, accommodation, affordable accommodation in, in the district and that uh, is something that has been significantly helped by the housing uh, allocations that have uh, been made through the core strategy but there is still some uh, considerable uh, way to go. In raw terms uh, you'll, you'll probably all be aware of the figure that's bandied about generally for the uh, need, needs of, of new housing uh, in the in in the UK as a whole, at, at, at sort of 250,000 new builds a, a year now, clearly some of that is uh, is market housing. A substantial uh, proportion of that is also uh, affordable housing. Um, the uh, the total number of houses built last year, I think, was 118,000. So the pent up demand in the current in the current Parliament alone is more than half a million uh, houses across the country as a whole, and that situation is replicated uh, at, at local level. In terms of the issue of um, of hidden households, um, you know, clearly there are different types of hidden households. If one looks at the uh, the th the, uh, what's been happening in the last uh, few years in relation to glorified, um, call them what you will, um, uh, outbuildings being constructed in gardens all across the district, all across the southeast, I think, um, the, the, those are accommodating uh, all sorts of people. It may be uh, that the, it may be uh, that, that you know students have uh, have come home from university, can't get a job, and parents don't want them living in the house, so they built a nice shed in uh, in in the back garden. And we've seen that happening uh, time and time again. And I get numerous reports and calls <coughs> from uh, residents saying, "What's this going up in 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 the, in the back garden? Can't you do something about it?" No, sorry, it's permitted development. Um, so I think there's a whole range of issues. If one, you know, expands the 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 the, the, the debate about you know housing and how uh, how that works uh, and what the needs uh, and and uh, are for, uh, for for both affordable housing and market housing uh, in in the district, hope that helps. Second um, question. To be honest, it is a question on here, but I'm not sure who's put it forward. But it's not been asked yet. Um, the facilities that temporary accommodation provides. How how is it assessed if if somebody came to you? I mean, obviously, everybody comes in different circumstances. If, for example, a family with young children came to you and needed emergency or temporary accommodation, would you look to put them in accommodation that whose facility or what the facilities match their requirements? Ch Chairman, it could very well be that a family will be accommodated. In, in, in bed and breakfast in, in that situation. That is the only immediate alternative that we can offer up in those, uh, in, in those, uh, in those situations. That's the most likely course of So in that situation, situation there's actually, I mean, apart, I know obviously there's providing them with the housing, but there's not a lot of other support available to that family at that time. That it's most likely it would be bed and breakfast accommodation. When? Can I, can I just... Yeah, sorry, that's what yeah, Very, very briefly. Um, at the moment, in temporary accommodation, we've got 42 families. That's too many. This time last year, we had 47. I worked closely with the CAB, and in this economic climate, the families that are going to them and the individuals around um, budgets, managing their, their money, getting into mortgages, is increasing. And yet, because they're 42, working... 42, you say? 42 families. 42. Because they're working closely now with these families, there's a lot of preventative work going on. So I'm not happy that it's 42, but I am very happy that it's less than last year, especially in this financial climate. Um, around that, could I just ask, of the 42, how many would be in B&B accommodation? Um, of the 42, we've got 13. In B&B accommodation? Yes. Uh, uh, but we've, we have heard from Rotary Housing Association that they have a vacant, was it one vacant unit at the moment? Hmm. Them, you know. We have um, we have six flexible units. So um, the agreement between us and yourselves is that we have eight units that are available, which are designated yes. temporary accommodation. You can have up to six others. And um, I was using the example that you're using one of our um, ex scheme managers' houses at the moment. So I also said in answer to one of the questions that if you wanted then to approach us to put a homeless family in one of our units 
you would need to make a decision as a council whether you wanted to nominate a homeless family mm. temporarily into that yes. unit or if you wanted to permanently house someone from your register. Mm. And I think that is the question, obviously, yeah. the difficult Sorry, question. for clarification, of the 14 units which are available, which you stated earlier for temporary accommodation, they're all full at the moment? No, because six of them are flexible. They're not, I don't want really you to think they're six houses somewhere. They are so six are flexible anywhere. because they are? They're anywhere in the district. Right. So um, if you came to us this week and we had a property at... I don't know, Rochford Garden Way, vacant, and you wanted it for temporary accommodation, then you could have it for yeah. temporary accommodation. So it's not a fixed unit, it's just a It's wherever it may be, wherever one, one may be into that. But so the difficult decision you have as a council is if you put someone in that property yeah. temporarily, you were then not housing someone permanently yeah. from your mm -hmm. waiting list. Yes. So it's I think it's, roundabouts. Yeah. It's, it's certainly useful, I think, you know, for if you've got um, people with particular needs, complex needs family size, something like that. I think that's probably when we've tended to be approached in the past for, for specific cases right. rather than, a, um, you know, as a rule. Thank you. Um, Councillor Black. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, a few questions that have come out of the debate or the discussion. Um, first of all, about sofa surface. Um, this may be anecdotally, but the ones you've seen, are they people who are, who are young people who are students, or are they out of, are they out of work, or are they in work, or is there no particular? Are they on the um, if you want to ask me about the ones I know personally, yes, yes. they're the ones that are under the radar. They're not even registered as neat because they won't have signed. No, I, I understand that. So, so they're, they're not. But are, but are they in work, or are they not working? Or? Um, sorry, neat means not in education, employment, or training. Okay, yeah. okay. understood. Okay, fine. I was wondering why they weren't interested in, in applying, and, and my guess is, well, or if, they, if they were in work, they might be saving up money and planning to get something on the road, but clearly that's not the case, mostly. Or it may be that they can't be bothered, or it may be that they think it's a waste of time, or they may think that the properties we've got aren't of interest to them. Have you got any thoughts about why um, they don't bother? Yeah, yeah. Um, George has <laughs> said all of the above. Yes, OK. Um, yeah, th th they will know families that perhaps have been on the waiting list yes. for a while, take that as gospel that they're not going to be a priority, possibly. Yeah. Um, and also sometimes it fits in with their lifestyle and it is a choice they've made. Okay, that's just fine, thank you. Also, I think you mentioned about the homelessness strategy and I thought I'd go onto the council website and very, very quickly, I mean, it's very, it's not necessarily like you go straight into housing and you find the housing, the homelessness strategy very quickly, which is actually, I think, 2011 to 2014. Mm -hmm. So we're due to put a new one up there. Yes, we are. Mm -hmm. And um, yes. it, I, uh, well, I've agreed it, haven't I? So it's just okay. Yeah. Now, just when I find an old document, I like to look at the end of it, and there's a section of the old one marked the future. Mm -hmm. um, so we're in the future now. I'll just pick up one thing there. It says, um, Rochford District Council will need to work closely with Essex County Council's social services department to ensure homeless young people are quickly assessed and housed where needed. Okay. Developing a close working relationship with, between the county and district council will help provide a seamless service between the two organisations. Yeah. How do you think that's worked out in practice? Um, for our leaving, uh, and I, I specifically believe that in relation to our leaving and aftercare team, yep. so, so young people who've yep. been in care, yep. yes, they have received a good service through social services. Okay. Um, could it be better? As with most services, probably. Okay, that's a fair answer. And just, just a final comment. You were saying about um, the CAB helping people avoid dealing with mortgage arrears and that kind of thing. Presumably, every, every time you hear something on the radio about uh, the possibility of interest rates going up, you, you must. Uh, well a bit because that, that's a real, real worry I guess for homelessness. Um, it, it is a real, a, a real um, worry for homelessness. Um, the CAB, um, we're looking to actually commission some more work from them next year hopefully. Okay. Um, it's early days and we're um, chatting to them. I say the CAB, we will commission an information providing service. Um, but again with the mortgage arrears, Sean knows I've already been chatting with the Housing Association to looking at is this an option for us? If people are falling into mortgage arrears, then is it an option for us to pay the mortgage, put a charge to the house because we will have that back and it gives stability for that family? But 
how many of these families are actually in their own accommodation. A lot, as Sean's already pointed out, are already in private rental and finding it hard to reach that. It's the, the, the cheaper rental market that we need. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Castle Seekers. Okay. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I've got two or three questions. Um, Mr. Scrutton, I think, touched upon it a little earlier when he sort of seemed to imply that there were suspicions that we were being sort of shunted um, uh, homeless people into this district uh, rather than the other way around, which I think was a question from one of the other members. Um, is, is, is that uh, the, possibly the case? And what checks do we do to ensure or to ascertain, perhaps, might be a better word, um, whether um, those people are already on another authority's housing list, um, um, maybe trying to sort of back uh, an each way bet, shall we say? Yeah. Do you want to say, Sean? Chairman, I believe anybody can be in any waiting list they want yeah. to be on. Yes. Uh, but, but my comment, uh, uh, and I wouldn't like to take it any further than that, I, I'm not sure how easily it would be for us to determine whether there's any you know, absolute proof that that is the case. I mean, it's an anecdotal uh, interpretation of, of just, you know, feeling about what, what, what uh, has, has been happening. And I wouldn't put it any stronger than, than, than that. No, that's, that's, that's fair enough. No, what I was really sort of uh, I, I aiming at was, um, you know, whether we make checks that they are actually homeless in or for this district oh, yes. rather than for others. Oh, yeah. And how, how, yeah. how much... Yeah effort goes into that, yeah. I presume it's, it's quite significant. It's, yes. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the assessment of whether someone uh, qualifies to be housed by the council is, uh, is, 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 is detailed uh, and intensive in terms of the, the checks that, 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 are, that are carried out, and it can take some considerable time to go through that, uh, through, through that process, yeah. And what would be the uh, upshot in the short term, would we be sort of housing them or put it in, in, in yeah. B yes, for the time are. being and, until that point. Yes, and they are. Until that assessment is completed, right. um, they would be, they, they, if we've accepted them at the, whenever, if they turn up at the, uh, uh, up, up at the council's reception, uh, we will continue to, uh, to look after them until such time as that assessment has been carried out. Right. Um, another question. In view of the um, injunction which has been obtained I believe by Harlow and Essex County Council in combination today. Um, are we expecting or prepared for the possible influx of homeless people who if they um, do not uh, move from Harlow to neighbouring authorities, probably closer than Rochford is, um, are we, are we sort of prepared to actually accommodate um, an influx of people who could Are you talking about the traveller community? It could be, yes. Yeah. Um, I was going to well, say, could you clarify what injunction yeah. you're talking yeah. about? There was, an injun oh, there was an injunction on the national news today yeah. um, which had been granted, uh, at least on an interim basis, by, I believe, a High Court judge, or a judge at least, mm. um, whereby all... Um, um, travellers uh, um, or caravans within the Harlow district um, have been served an injunction, a broad injunction over a very wide area, the whole of that Harlow um, district, uh, district um, that uh, they cannot um, reside on school playing fields, verges, you name it, the, the, the whole lot is covered. Um, and it does mean that there's a, a strong possibility, I assume, that we will have um, within Essex, because they've, some of them have stated they would not be moving very far, um, we may have uh, an influx of, of those that are required. Is that home. a question around homelessness, though? Um, they, they, well, homeless? they, 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 they say they will be homeless, so yeah. I assume that they will be looking to actually go on to, to uh, someone's list. Chairman, yeah, we're, we're a member of the county-wide traveller yes. unit. They liaise um, with all the travellers within the mm. community. Harlow won't. Perhaps if Harlow had, they might not have incurred that problem to start with. <coughs> okay, right. Thank you. Um, 
Yeah. And then Councillor Mountain. Councillor Mountain is a visiting member, but I have no problem with visiting members asking questions. Thank so. you. Thank you, Chairman. I'd, it was uh, a cross between what uh, Councillor Butcher and Councillor Lawman said. Um, regarding uh, the isolated incident of uh, somebody that's now ended up in, in prison for uh, attacking uh, their neighbour, or, or, uh, with, with the stakeholders involved, uh, at, at what point, um, or were there points, obviously this is an escalation in behaviour, so was that person housed in that location because there weren't other options available? Because it seems like that, that it was inappropriate housing, um, and had there been sort of a few warning signs as a pattern of behaviour escalated and in hindsight could that person have been relocated before they ended up in a prison yeah. cell? Um, I, I'll pass it over to Emma but I, I'll have to say, and I, oh it's working, sorry, um, I have to say that um, uh, it, there is a long drawn out process before somebody gets evicted. I'll pass over to Emma and I do apologise, my phone's not been working and it's now just to work. Yeah, I mean, as to whether or not it was appropriate nomination, I, I can't really answer that question because it would have been the council who had the information who then nominated that person to the property. And, and I would say, without them knowing who the case is and having that information, I, I don't think they can then probably answer that tonight. And um, from our point of view, um, yeah, it was a complex case. There was a mental health issue. There was also addiction. There were various other um, criminal allegations and, and things um, involved um, and we were, were meeting with the residents to try and get proof of, of antisocial behaviour and meeting with the appropriate agencies um, as to um, what tipped off the assault what happened on you know I, I don't know um, what tipped off then I don't really know the history to it I wasn't directly involved in the case all I can say is that you know during our uh, you know our process our investigation we were liaising with all the appropriate organisations yeah, just one follow-up question. Yeah, I do, because obviously I think it extends to the duty of care that we've got on, on both sides of the fence. So obviously if something is being flagged up, there may be an, an inappropriate housing issue. How, how quickly can that be dealt with? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think... Um, I, sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> sorry. Um, I think sometimes it's about... Um, the, the willingness of the person to engage in the process as well because of course they have rights so whilst you know we have people who um, aren't in the best suited accommodation I'm thinking maybe people in shelters for a different situation but people aren't always willing to accept they're not in the best accommodation they, they maybe don't want to admit defeat so I think unfortunately sometimes um, if those people are you know won't help themselves really and then help the process or maybe they're not able to maybe they haven't got the capacity that makes it a bit more difficult really so it might have been all the agencies were involved we were trying to help that person but actually you know there, there, there was just an issue that we couldn't yeah. get across okay. i'm going to ask a question I, I am aware that i might or might not know the answer to these but obviously other members may not know the answer to these councillor Mason's question. I just want to just quickly follow up the thing on which to um, Councillor Manchester was asking about. Does the um, Housing Association, as in Rochester Housing Association, employ a full time antisocial behaviour officer? No, we employ, um, we have quite a, a small housing management team, but we employ two um, housing officers who deal with tenancy and housing management issues. So um, they don't deal with rent arrears. Um, we have a specialist team who deal with rent arrears, but they would deal with um, tenancy issues, including ASB. Um, so we have two who work on our general needs properties, and then we have two who work on our sheltered properties. And, they and we have 2,000 yeah. units. And they'll be trained in ASB issues? Yep, we're, uh, um, all our staff are, are trained in ASB, but at the moment actually they're going through BTEC qualifications. So in addition to having the um, in-house training on the policies and procedures that they all already, you know, always would have had, um, following the introduction of the new ASB Act in October, um, we're training all the staff up to uh, um, BTEC qualifications. Do you think that's more appropriate than having a dedicated ASB officer, which was obviously the offer document? Yeah, I mean, a, a decision was taken by the board, and it was a, it, it was ratified by the board about um, probably about four years ago, something like that, not to have a dedicated antisocial behaviour officer. Um, and um, you know, I think part of the, the um, reason for that is if you have one dedicated officer on the six weeks off that they have annual leave a year and, and whatever and those sorts of things, there's nobody else who can pick those cases up. 
um, you know, and if, if they're, you know, if, if they're not in the office. So actually, the idea was that we would have staff who are all trained in ASB, and so at the moment they're actually going to, uh, t you know, to nationally recognise qualifications. That's, that's what they're working towards. I think um, the cases that I've spoken about tonight very isolated. We've had a number of cases we've taken to court this year, I have to say for ASB, um, but generally you get a suspended session order, so people are allowed to stay in their property as long as they um, adhere to the conditions that are set down. Very unusual to have that many cases go to court, I have to say. I'm struggling to think of anyone else who's evicted for ASB in our history, but I might be wrong, but I don't think we actually have. Okay. Right, thank you. Um, Cass Mason, I've just got one more question to offer that. It's a, <coughs> it's, a, it's a brief question, yes. Joe, and I'm sorry that I didn't flag it up um, you know, in our pre-meeting. Um, it came to mind because we've talked about um, mortgage arrears and rent arrears being a prelude to potential homelessness. And then it occurred to me, well, of course, we have the phenomenon, the sad phenomenon in this country of food banks. And of course, people needing to go to food banks mm -hmm. is another one of these markers that must be a, a potential prelude to homelessness. So I'm asking whether the council's got any, any, any information on the extent to which our residents are needing to um, uh, visit food banks, and, and even if they're allied to the areas of poverty that we're aware of. Um, yeah, I can tell you we've got food banks in um, Rochford. I can't provide you the figures now, but I can do because I recently asked that and also how many people have been referred to them through from our offices. It was a nominal number. Um, I then found out that Hope Works provide for Castle Point as well, which have a greater need, so um, that was quite... Um, but again, the, the, the difficulty is, and it's going back to that preventative work, it's working with these families about budgeting. and priorities. What comes first? The sky bill or the food? And some of the families that, and when you're talking about families and trying to help them and work with them, there are families who will push against the grain. We've got a mediation service that is free for families. So when they're suffering from antisocial behaviour with another neighbour, that's offered to them for free. Some will not engage. So do we get the feeling that you know food banks are, are not a last resort they are in fact you know one of the, one of these pushbacks that you know in terms of the budget if there's a if there's a food bank near then people will tend to use them because they can part part of their budget in that particular area no um, not all at all um, and the food banks in the Rochester district are run under the Trussell Trust Moss model. Is everybody familiar with that? Broadly. No. I yeah. think it's best if you give us a short explanation. But a short explanation is rather than um, somebody just coming and having um, a food parcel every week, they actually start to engage that family and work with them and see what the issues are. It may be that they are having huge financial problems. They may have lost their job, they may be having a breakdown, they may, may need a lot of support. They may be have addiction issues, something like that. They, they, it's a whole gambit of different issues. But the Trust or Trust model engages services that can help them and support them. Right. I will ask. I was going to ask for food banks, but I think it's been. Sorry. There's just one question. Um, very, 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 very briefly, because we are now is twenty that, minutes uh, over time on this. Yeah. Is, is the Trust or Trust? Uh, model widely applied throughout the country, do you know? Um, it, it's applied in South End. When um, a church first approached me about running it in the Rochester district, I linked them into a church in South End that's run it very um, well for several years. And we don't have any knowledge about what goes on elsewhere in the country. They're the biggest national yeah. department. They're, they're, they're the leading yeah. food bank, aren't they? I can't think of another big no. organisation no. who runs Thoroughly the recommended. And it makes perfect sense. If these families are coming um, for um, you know, uh, food parcels that are given that support. And so people have to be referred, so they can't just turn up, yeah. you know, so as, well, as well as getting the support, well, you know, they will be referred by an organisation. I think it's very important to that people understand that people are referred to a food yeah. bank, you can't just turn up as, and... Um, it, it, <laughs> sorry, Councillor Rupp, Sorry, am I correct you? They can self-refer. They can, yes. Yeah. 
I, that's why I paused. It's a bit Sorry. more complicated than that. Um, where, do, where do they hang out? Um, can we just move on from those? But, um, all I want to clarify are bound food banks is, and I'm, I'm not sure if this is what Councillor Mason asked or if he got it answered or not, or I might have missed it, is that where people go to a food bank, do we, col do, do we have, or are we able, I can understand there might be anonymity, I can nearly say the word, there, but do we gather information from that to help people That's what I was if they need help right. as a first sign that they may be needing yeah. help? Uh, that is the whole idea of the Trust yes. Trust is they build up a relationship. They may need their benefits checked. Perhaps mm. they're not receiving everything that they're yes. entitled to. They may need extra support from the CAB and we can refer them on to the CAB. We've yeah. built up a partnership that does with happen. them. That happens as much as the people okay. want it to happen. Yeah, I understand that point. Right. right. We're now drawing to I just want to very quickly ask one a question around unintentionally or intentionally homeless. Um, do you feel that the, the the way that we provide accommodation is based on the fact that people must not make themselves intentionally homeless? Does do you think this also causes a problem? It may reduce our waiting list or reduce the duty for us to provide them with, with homes. But do you feel that people are uncomfortable in making themselves? Sorry, would you do you feel that people would be uncomfortable in being taken to court over rent arrears or whatever it may be that is making them homeless to make sure that they're not may, making themselves intentionally homeless? It, it means that they are in, incurring their landlording costs that they can feel uncomfortable with, and those costs mean that they probably will not be able to get any private room, no longer be able to have private rented accommodation in the way that they're forced to make themselves unintentionally homeless, if you like. Do you think that is a, an, an issue? Yes. And I, I, I would like to see that we are grow our preventative work so it doesn't get to that stage. Yeah. Hmm. How can... In, 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 I'm really conscious of time at the moment, <laughs> but I think it's an important issue. Um, can you expand on that in 30 seconds? Or not? <laughs> to our um, uh, basically, I've had a meeting <coughs> over today which I've been working with um, the uh, Chief Executive of the CAB and literally saying, What do you think? Working because they work with a lot more organisations mm. um, than, than us. What do you think more can we be doing, or what can you offer to do for us and work closer with these families? It may come with a price tag, it probably will do, but if they can turn around and say, through this preventative work, we can stop 50 families from becoming homeless, that's what I want to be doing. Yes, okay. Um, and one final question around housing lists. Um, Roger District Council's housing list has constraints within it on who will be provided with homes, i.e. there, I think it's... Um, I can't remember the exact criteria, but it's um, you must have a connection with the three years in the last five years, you must have a connection with the, the district mm -hmm. and things around that. I understand that Rochester Housing Association doesn't have a similar list and, it, and basically they would house anyone from anywhere within the country if they met the requirements. Is that correct? And do you think that would have, do you think that actually causes problems with the homelessness in the area at the moment? Well, we have um, our register, we have 148 people on our register at the moment, so we don't have a, a very big register. And the majority of those will be for sheltered accommodation because our, we close our waiting list to general needs um, applicants, family applicants. Um, because, it, you know, we have a different system. We have, we have you know, we're not covered by statute in the, in the way that you are. And so we're able to open and close our list. So basically we've closed our list, say, for three-bedroom houses because we've got 19 families on it. Now, given that um, in every four proper three beds that comes up, you will get three of them to nominate two, and we will only get one. Actually, nine, we won't get 19 three bed properties in a year, so we close our list, we open and close it so that it doesn't get unre unrealistically um, large, you know, because we don't want people sat on there for 19 years expecting to get a property or uh, 10 years to get a property, something like that. So, so ours is. You can't say whether it's a true reflection of demand or not. It's 148. It is what it is. It's the majority of that is for sheltered accommodation. And, and yes, people can move um, from outside the district um, to our properties. Okay. Right. I think that's it. Thank you very much for coming. Mm -hmm.
Thank you. I hope it wasn't too onerous. I think um, I'd like to thank you for the information. We will provide the list of questions that we want or would like written up give, to give you time so we, we've got written answers to them. If that's okay, we'll provide those. Thank you, Chairman. Just to make sure that that's quite clear. Yeah. Okay. And, and as you. I always say to members, if anybody's got any other questions around homelessness, yeah. um, please, please do um, just ask. And Councillor Glynn, if you can give me the details of who you reported that person to that you saw at reception, that would be wonderful. Oh, fine. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Mr Chairman, can I just slip off? It's the tablet. Can I just dip out? Yeah, sure. Um, we have, have a minute, I think, before we start the next one. Yes. If you need a coffee, get away. It's not that bad. I've run, it's just not, I've run, I've run very much over time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll see. Is, this okay? I was just saying, so. no, yeah, no, is there any? Yeah. I know there's some members come back. Is there anything anyone wants to draw out particularly from that, or not? I think so. I think we just. Well. I think I was a little, um, I'm, I'm speaking in front of Sean, so yeah, not that I have to be particularly careful, but I want to be respectful. Um, I, I, was, um, I was pretty disappointed that um, you know, some of the base questions that we had flagged up you know, weren't, weren't ready to be answered. Mm. But a lot of the information we asked about to get a feel for you know, the need for preventative work in the council, we need, we need some figures. Mm. And, and I think, you know, we are going to have in review committee to consider, you know, how we might, um, you know, fashion a, a way for the council to get that information for itself, because you can't really do and grow the preventative work till you know what we're actually looking at. Yeah. I don't. I genuinely. Your questions be answered. Yeah. Yeah, but I genuinely feel that there was an awful lot of what was said um, from our visitors, there actually was a, 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 a smoke screen because they didn't know the answers and were not involved in it. Now, I genuinely feel that in future, we really need to have a group, maybe two or three people, that part of their time at work is to sort out all this to do with homelessness and that because we in my opinion it's just um, although we've got it there and everywhere else has got it but Rotsford everybody thinks we don't have much at all that we all know every one of us have people in our own area that have major problems and I really do feel that we should not be smoke screen tonight Oh, sorry, Liz. Yeah, yeah I, I, I'm, I'm concerned about the smoke screen because, in, in actual fact, we didn't. I mean, we had the portfolio holder here who obviously has, has got a lot of knowledge around this, and, and, and I would assume has, has, has perhaps got some concerns as well. Mm -hmm. And maybe we didn't actually ask the question, what concerns do you have yeah. about yeah, <coughs> the homelessness yeah. situation? Yeah. Because mm. I think, you know, we, we had some, some honest answers there, and I think there are some concerns. I mean, a couple of things that I did pick up, she said, maybe we ought to be looking at, do we need supported accommodation? And um, she did emphasise some of the preventative work, so perhaps that was an indication from the portfolio holder that maybe that is what yeah. she is concerned about. But, but, but perhaps we should have just asked her. Yeah. And the because she's just got the knowledge yeah. and you know, asked straight out, yes. what, what does she know? And I think it's quite clear that she asked that, or did suggest that some of the subjects would be suitable mm. for us to look at as well. So I think mm. that, that was there. So, so, I think so, it's a very good point. so maybe you know, with these questions we're, we're sending her, perhaps we can ask what support yeah. and help yeah. that she feels. I think that's a very good to. point. Yeah. Sorry, Kessler Norman. 
Sorry, I'll, I'll just pick up the... Uh, it's just very brief. We're just, just quickly going over... Yeah, because I'll just start. Two or three minutes. I, I, from my perspective, and it's purely my perspective, bearing in mind, little knowledge is a bad thing sometimes, is I don't fully understand, and it's about me really, but I, to get into this, I don't fully understand because of the separation of housing from council now, you know, whereas before it was a council property, you know what I mean? Um, how this is all worked out. Who, who, who makes all the decisions about who goes onto a house and this, who does this? Is there a department? I mean, I don't fully understand how that works. Yeah, I think that's fine. I think we have to get your the brief. The machinery. On. I don't you, know. You need to visit that. the department. Yeah. Pardon? You need to visit the department. Yeah, you need to speak to oh, I accept that. But I, well, that's the problem I'm having, is putting that together. But I think that should be done outside this yeah. meeting. So yeah. I'm sure but, Sean could the rights that? Sure, yeah, de yeah. definitely. It's I'll all about nomination rights. Right. There, there is a close yeah. relationship between the council and uh, and housing associations, and yeah. uh, the council has uh, has priority nomination rights uh, to yeah. the uh, to the housing associations. Well, no, we're going to no, but, no, 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 we, can, we, can, we can provide yeah, details of, of how that process works. But what I was going to say was, if I may, there was brought up there about this antisocial behaviour thing, which is a thing for me, but uh, about behaviour, etc. They've only got a part-time, we have, only got a part-time uh, ASB coordinator stuck in the police station, so I don't see where his link is from a council perspective into housing. Yeah. He couldn't get further away. And then in their perspective, they're saying, I'm training all my officers out. Well, you are, uh, they're going to be uh, distracted, if you like, because of all their other commitments about what is antisocial. So they're going to be yeah. limited. And I'm just, that question about... So you're adding the concerns the relationship. around that. Okay. But if I, have to, if yeah. I have to take up the offer first, Yep. Before I go into that, yeah, we'll do that. Be, yeah. right, I see. It might be resolved. Yeah, 15 yeah, seconds. Yeah, yeah. Just briefly, yeah. Um, some two or three months ago, I think there was a an email came round to us all asking, um, you know, for our sort of uh, thoughts on uh, homelessness and mm. what criteria ought to be applied. Um, whether we should adjust our um, criteria at all, um, and if so, in what way. But uh, is that still in process, or? Ch Ch Chairman, there is a there is a there is a report on the key registered on the key decisions list uh, um, that uh, proposes to make changes in the in, in the arrangements. That will come before council. Yeah. How many? Uh, be the the but they'll be subject to call. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. We're coming to that side to meet. We've uh, had that arranged to everyone we know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just we've just been asked about how many housing associations there are that we're linked with. How but many have we got in Rochford uh, District? Yeah. So we'll ask that outside the meeting, I think, because I really want to move on to the next subject. So yeah, we'll I'd like to know yeah, answer, answer that at some future time. You'll, you'll get it very shortly. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, I'm just conscious of the time, and I don't want to do the meeting again, that was all. Um, car parking income. Chairman, to a point of order, yes. do I need to apologise for not attending a pre-meet? Uh, John uh, Racing actually uh, referred to a pre-meet during the discussion. Um, I'm not sure if apologies are appropriate for a pre-meeting. There, there was no, one. No. Yes. There was one tonight. Yeah, and it was on an email to everybody. Some I missed it, I'm sorry, my notice. apologies. Yeah, no, that's it. I, I, I understand that the pre-meetings are hard to get to sometimes, people, because they are that little bit earlier and I don't understand how people work. And it, it's not always possible. Um, car parking comes, so we've had the, yeah. the report. It's recommended that we, yeah. that we note. Um, I think Councillor Black. Yeah, so, uh, interesting. First of all, I'll, councillors have to review themselves and, the, and how they vote on things. and. Uh, I, I, I was against increasing the charges because I thought it wouldn't do much of income and affect the town centre. I, I was wrong on that, clearly because income's gone up and the number of people coming in has gone up, come up. On the other hand, I was right in to vote against abolishing Saturday afternoons because I think uh, it's been proved that we, we can manage the council quite well and still keep free Saturday afternoons. Um, but apart from that, very interesting the figures, if you look at the breakdown, uh, over the time periods, so I think it's fair to say they're all over the place, aren't they? Some are higher, some are lower. And I wonder if anybody's got any, if anybody's got any thoughts on that as, as to why. And I wondered in particular if we had any information about how Saturday mornings are, are doing, mm. as opposed to the rest of the week. But that's just my, my thoughts and, and questions, really. 
I don't, I don't know if uh, someone's got the answers to that or any, any thoughts on that. Um, I, I, my, my impression is that Saturn Morons are, do, are, doing, are doing very well, but I mean, I, I can, uh, you know, I can provide uh, a breakdown of Saturday mornings. Yeah, uh, can you provide a breakdown of Saturday afternoons mm. as well, please? Uh, that would be a bit difficult. Yeah. 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 I um, do see an awful lot of people paying on Saturday oh, really? afternoons. Yeah. So yeah, I'm sure true. we do have any trouble on Saturday yeah. afternoons. Um, is that yeah, not true at all? Yeah. I say pay, I'll tell them not to pay. That might be a bad thing, but I do, do there are certainly a You're not the only significant number of people who <laughs> do pay. Okay. And they during Saturday mornings in notice. December yes. as well. Yes. Mm. You know, I've done that. But it's just, it's just, you know, if we do have any, if we do have any information on Saturday mornings and Saturday afternoons, mm. that would be interesting. <coughs> yes. That's good. Sorry, that's the I mean, Councillor Black looks obviously, obviously spent more time looking at this than I. He alluded to the fact that the, um, the time bands are kind of all over the place. Can he, can he just point me to where he'd like to ask Mr. Scrap particular questions? Well, I've, I've really, in terms of Saturday afternoons, which, which, which aren't, which aren't sorry, Saturday mornings, which aren't here, but if, if you look, for example, um, 30 minutes, a lot more tickets are sold, uh, up to <coughs> one hour more tickets sold, one to two hours. A lot less tickets sold. Yeah. Um, I think it's quite clear, isn't it, that yes. there's, there seems to be a, a, a large, larger number of people or tickets being sold for under an hour, yeah. and then it's sort yes. of one to three hours yes, right. down, yeah, and then yeah, the longer right. ones are, are going up. Yes. Yeah. So, so it, it, I mean, maybe people are popping in, either popping, popping in quickly, going away quickly, or they're staying longer. Yeah. And you know. Maybe maybe it's for, maybe it's for, maybe it's for cafes. People are, are not staying. They're either going quickly and going away again, or they stay and having a, having a coffee somewhere. Mm. As much is too early. We, when we when we you know when we advise on on issues around uh, uh, car parking uh, tariffs, um, you know one of the things that uh, we look at very closely is what the what the unintended consequences might be from making changes, and sometimes it's difficult to. Yeah. Uh, fully uh, gauge what those might be, and uh, you will recall that you know we always seek to try and address those in uh, in the risk assessments in in any report. But I did I did notice just as an aside, I noticed that the traders in Lee on Sea seem to be up in arms now yeah. that actually they're losing trade as a result yeah. of the fact that the. Uh, on street parking arrangements have changed from one hour uh, no return to two hours and uh, and I just thought that was quite interesting um, that you know there's a, a change that had taken place uh, you know and and I think probably called for by the traders um, and actually they're now saying they want it reversed uh, because they, they think it's had, had a, an, an adverse impact and it's just an example of how uh, 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 important it is to try and get the, uh, the, the these arrangements right, so that you do get the uh, the turnover of car parking in the car parks, and you you know the trade traders do get the uh, the, uh, the the custom uh, that they that they require to be uh, successful and viable. Okay. Um, um, the thirty minute to one hour could be that a lot of it now it's gone up to a pound uh, for an hour and fifty. <coughs> A lot of people mm. very often don't have 50p, so they just put the, mm. the mm. pound in because it's easier. Um, yeah, and yeah. I know um, a few people have done that. I've got some indications. I, all I'll say is I'll take visiting members last. That's okay, just so they're aware. Um, Councillor Glynn. Yeah, purely just on Lee, the amount of uh, extra car parking places they put, especially in Lee, uh, uh, in the main entrance and down Bolton Way, it's absolutely amazing. Uh, in the last month, how all these uh, new um, tickets are coming into being. So where you could sit and watch out to ri the river, now you've got to pay to do it. And that's the area that I think w we're not involved in that in any shape because we haven't put any more extra um, car parking uh, places in Rockford to pay for. Everywhere that we've got, it's been there for some time. And it is quite different to South End. Thank you. Councillor Burton? Um, it's not really a question, it's just a, an observation really. Um, I think my view, looking at this bit, I'm not surprised that income's gone up, that's why it was introduced. It was introduced to make the council extra money and that's what it's done, quite simply. Um, with regards to the sales of tickets, you know, there's, there's an increase in houses being built in the district 
So I think there will be a natural increase in tickets with more houses, more cars. And look, really, these figures aren't that much of a surprise. I don't personally think. I think it's quite a natural. You know, the fees have gone up, the number of cars have gone up. Um, Councillor Seegers? Um, yes, I think I'd echo uh, Councillor Burton's sort of comments that uh, um, <coughs> in terms of the actual ticket sales, um, it's remarkably stable through through uh, uh, the comparable period uh, yeah. the previous year. Um, I'm, I'm just wondering whether some of the apparent anomalies in the um, sort of allocation of tickets at 30 minutes to 30 minutes to one hour, one to two hours, etc. Um, there might be some sort of arbitrage going on there uh, in terms of uh, the way in which people may be. Um, uh, arranging their visits and, and payments. Uh, I, don't know whether, I can't recall all of the hourly charges or the different band charges, but uh, uh, is, is that possibly some uh, uh, reason for the apparent disparities in, in the way that people are staying? It could be. Uh, that's probably as, as much as I can say. I mean, yeah, people do. Uh, look to see, um, you know, how they can pay the minimum fee um, to uh, to park and do the business that they need to do. So, yeah. I think um, we probably need to know more about which car parks yeah. as well. Maybe a bit by car park. Yeah. I think it's possibly quite interesting. It might, to my mind, it might be indicating that the high street is changing, and perhaps in Rochford and in Rayleigh that we're getting to more of a. Um, service sector if you like with people either popping in very quickly to do the banking or something very quickly with I'm not going to say fewer shops but perhaps maybe less of a shopping experience and they'll get in other places but then they're staying longer because they're going out for a lunch or a meal. Mm -hmm. Clearly, there's 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 yeah. getting the balance right in the town centre in terms of you know retail well, versus other, uh, other other uses is is really quite important. I think in the in the in the modern world now, and you know people are looking for for more of an experience. I think rather than just uh, popping into uh, to to a shop and, and leaving, though that still clear, clearly yeah. clearly happens. But people are looking you know to visits to be more more of an event. I mean, one of the interesting things is, and it's it's you know it's not a it's not a dramatic Dramatic increase, I guess, um, in relation to the total uh, the, the total income. But I mean, clearly, mobile phone transactions are are uh, beginning to, to grow. And, that, and what's interesting about that, I guess, is that um, if if you pay by mobile phone, um, you're not under the same pressure to depart as you as you might be uh, if you've uh, put some some cash in in the machine. Because the mobile phone will, your mobile phone will 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 um, will warn you when uh, your um, your payment is due to expire and ask if you want to add some more money. So, um, it, you know, it gives a, a, um, a bit more fly. And I, I've used that uh, on on occasion, not in in this district but, but elsewhere. You know, and it gives you more flexibility in terms of your in, in terms of your, uh, your 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 visit. So it'll be interesting to see how that that develops uh, over the next uh, wee while. Um. I think I've got Councillor um, Mason, followed by Councillor Black, and then Councillor. Mm. I, I just want to pick up what well, Councillor Burton and Councillor Seager said, and with some sort of general assent to this um, conclusion that the more houses you build, the more cars there are, therefore, there are more visits, and therefore, there's more income, and we should expect that to, to happen. However, um, we've only got a finite capacity in our car parks. Mm. Now, I've been to Rayleigh of a Saturday morning. It's quite rare, I've got to, I've got to tell you. But I've actually found that car park very nearly full. Yeah. And I'm actually thinking, I've actually seen Hockley very nearly full as well. Mm -hmm. And that's the near, they're, the, they're the two nearest ones to me. Um, Rotswood I don't frequent as often. Uh, and terrible. it's probably during the week and visit for council. But my, my question is, to the, what extent is the council actually looking at these additional houses, generating additional car journeys, local car journeys for shopping? Have we got the capacity in the car parks? Yeah. Good question. 
Is it a question related it's to It's related to what yeah, that's Bill was yeah, saying. Yeah. The, there was some talk some years ago about building a multi-storey car park in Webster's oh, Way, wasn't there? <laughs> so I don't think we, we <laughs> want that particular. We didn't ask that. Radio Rex. Did uh, Mr. Scratch want to come back on that one? <laughs> Not the multi-storey car park, but the um, additional spaces. <laughs> I, I, I suppose um, it's interesting, isn't it? I, su I suppose um, the answer is yes and no to, to, to the, the respective you know comments that have been made. In the sense that I, I guess if if s some of the uh, some of the cars from new housing determine that they're going to uh, use car parks for a longer period, that might actually mean that the, the car parks are fuller. You know, I don't think there's probably very much capacity at the, at the quick turnover end, but you know, if, 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 uh, if some of the car, if that makes sense, you know, because if the, um, it, um, there may be more, more people thinking, well, we'll stay for a bit longer, you know, and uh, I, don't, I don't know, it's an interesting question and I can contemplate it further if, uh, if, 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 you, if, you, if you'd like. Oh, I think you'll be going But in there is a finite course. capacity, and I think that's the key, probably yeah. the key point ultimately in, 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 in I this. Would like it too, yeah. yeah, I think you'll go now, but I think it's a very good question. I think okay. Castle Burton for yeah. starting with Castle Burton. Mm. Um, Castle Black. Yeah, it's, it's a good question from Castle Burton, but I don't, I don't agree with his premise really. I, I, don't, I don't think that the increase in the population of the district has been enough to, to cover the increase in car parking. I think in the long term you'll look at that. Um, the, but also, all I've been hearing the last five, ten years is that the high streets are all doomed. We're all going to be going out of town and buying online. And, that's, and, and that, that's, there's a reverse for coming up. There's a comeback for the council, which is for, for the town centre, which is good, I think. Um, and that's starting to work. Um, but, but I think he, he's right that in the long term you've got to think about these things. Um, somebody mentioned about the, the, the multi story car park idea. For the newest <laughs> members, we had some consultants who, so to be fair to them, basically said the only thing you could do is put a multi story car park with a big, with a big store on multi story car park, but we don't really recommend it. That's how it came up, and no council liked it. <laughs> um, the, what struck me though, in, in all the figures, the, maybe the oddest one is that there's almost a f the, the number of people staying all day is almost up, is by, by almost a third mm -hmm. in one year. Mm -hmm. and, and I'd be interested to see the figures from the previous year to see whether the uh, 13, 14 was an unusually low, a low year for that. Because that, that is, that's one, you could explain in terms of shopping, people changing their habits, coming, not going, but staying all day is that, what is, who's that, doing that? Can you confirm, is, is, I think all day prices did not go up, did they? No. Yeah. How much are they, sorry? So I think there was something weird going on with the approach. Yeah, mm. I just wonder how much that is the approach car park. Um, well, the approach car park has uh, got a reduced daily fee um, and, and that has resulted in a significant increase in its usage. Um, by, by thousands, would you say? Um, I don't have the. Yeah. I, can, I can. I can provide the, the figures. Okay. Yeah. All days only a five, aren't it? Four quid. Yeah. Okay. The average price is, is less than that anyway, so the approach is obviously significant. If you work out the average yeah. cost on the all day ticket as well, well under five pounds. Actually. It is under five pounds. Yes. So I'll keep it very short. Just, um, to, Castle Burton, just something yeah. you said yeah. about that. Um, just thinking about it, I know, and you will know, because I'm in Love Lane. Yes. That the parents of Love Lane School have been extremely actively encouraged not to park in Love Lane or the surrounding roads anymore and th there's been a big increase in parents of Love Lane using the car park in the mornings and after school to drop and pick their kids up. Okay. I I'm, so I'm so glad you mentioned that. <laughs> trying to come here tonight there was a queue of about 12 cars parked in Love Lane. It's very difficult to get, get through So that, that might account for something, because I know that there's mm. a lot of parents are using that now. Okay. If I might, just, just to right. add to that, um, 
the, the what they call it, the Not poor about. cry. Yeah, <laughs> these poor charges yes. Yes. because of yeah. Love Lane, because yeah. everybody's parking in its car park. Okay. Right. That's not about our park, we don't get that much. No, I'm just saying, no, it's yeah. all yeah. this knock-on though, isn't it? Council yeah. um, yeah, just to, thank you Chair, just to put some flesh on the uh, sort of, uh, comments by um, Councillor Black, uh, as far as the um, impact of new housing is concerned, if we are achieving um, approximately the 250 houses per year, um, that represents still to my sort of very rough uh, calculation probably about 0.6% of, of housing stock as an increase. So uh, I think it would be having a, a, an infinitesimal impact on, on these numbers whereby sort of areas such as Great Wakery, for instance, don't have any public car parking other than on the roads. Um, so, uh, you know, it, 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 it uh, would uh, actually dilute that number even further in terms of the actual um, amount of, of extra car parking which would uh, uh, be uh, occurring. Um, and the other thought which I had was, uh, um, I wonder whether five pounds a day is uh, actually a bit of a bargain relative to um, some of the um, station car parking within the district. I think you might have found out brought out before. Just to give you some information, the average price per ticket on the August to January, the bottom table is £3.87. For the previous year, the average <coughs> price per ticket is £4.03. So both been under £5, so the approach is as if I'm going to play in that. I was thinking particularly in terms of all day car parking. That's the all day one I was talking about. Oh, right, yeah. okay. So the average price is well below, and that's pulled down because of the approach. That will, I suspect, be a great deal cheaper than an annual parking season at the stations. Yeah. But they don't like using it. Yeah. It's not used. I've been a house that overlooks the station car park. I can tell you there's yeah. 100, 200 spaces every day that yeah. aren't used. Strange. There you go. Sorry, um, we're drawing this one so close. Councillor Mountain. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you for letting me come in. Uh, it's a question really for the review committee, I guess. Uh, in my mind, if I'm correct, the, the reason for the increase was to plug a gap of about £60,000, I think we were told. Mm. That was the reason to increase charges. Now clearly it's, it's, done, uh, it's making a lot more than, than that needed amount. And I wondered whether there could perhaps be an argument now for um, giving something back in terms of making it free parking after 6 p.m. perhaps, or making it free parking all day Saturday. Mm. And whether that would have, w we would still be within the, the needed 60,000, because clearly we're, we're way over. Councillor Back. Yeah, thank you. I, I've mentioned before, but I thought. Stopping paying at 6 p.m. would be a good idea. Mm -hmm. It would help the early mm -hmm. restaurant trade. Mm -hmm. I, I would support that. I, I think Saturday mornings probably is, is a bit too is a bit too far because it's, it's pretty busy there already. Um, it, it, if you have it free Saturday mornings, it, 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 that will discourage turnover. So I, I would keep Saturday afternoons, yeah. Saturday mornings mm -hmm. yeah. free. It's like Saturday mornings paying. Mm -hmm. I wondered about if we have three Saturday mornings for four dates before Christmas, yes, am I right? Do. Yes. And I, and I wondered if, that, if that's worth extending, even if it's only for maybe one Saturday or two after Christmas for New Year's sales. Well, that would be a good idea. Mm. I've always that's wanted to raise idea. it, but of course it comes up as an urgent item. Yes. Um, it always catches the council off guard, Christmas. Um, and you know, if the review committee felt that it was worth having an, a couple of three Saturdays <coughs> after Christmas, I would certainly be very happy with that. I think, um, personally, I think that's an interesting point. I think also, I th I'm happy for that to be on the report to look at. Mm. Yep. Um, I'd be happy for the two, January, two days in January, because I thought that would be a good idea as well. I'd also agree after 6pm, and I'd also personally like to look at the provision of blue badges, free parking, at least in some of our car parks, which they currently do not have, apart from that initial hour. No particular. I don't know if other members agree with all those items. So, Councillor Glynn. I certainly fully uh, agree with the two Saturdays after Christmas mm -hmm. because a lot of people come into Rayleigh for the sales 
and, and it really is, uh, in my opinion, it's a damn good idea because instead of people going further afield, they come into Rayleigh and it's a nice place to be. As you all rightly know, people now stop and have a drink and everything else. So I think that would be excellent. But the other point which you came up with which was, uh, what was the other thing you just said? Um, after 6 p.m. Yeah, well, Everyone said it, not just me. But Yeah, but after 6 p.m. each night, I said this there's, there's not many people that actually, unless you're going to the doctors, uh, and I'm talking about Rochford with Back Lane, um, and there aren't any um, car park attendants around at that time of night. Uh, I've never caught one there. And I think 6 o'clock to finish would be a good idea, or si even 6.30. Six. I think that, you know, because at the, the, that last hour, Few people actually put their money in anyway. Yeah. Castle Mason. Joan, I don't want to talk about the options, I want to talk about how we handle it. Yes. Um, you know, we, we, we could just simply minute this, mm. um, these ideas, and pass them over to um, the portfolio holder or the executive and let them make their own decision. However, that doesn't involve ourselves in that. Yeah. And it, clearly, these are ideas come from this committee. So I wonder if we could extend an invitation to the portfolio holder and, and Mr. Scrutton to come back to the next um, review committee, um, having considered these, um, yes. these these points that have been made, so that we can, mm. you know, hear um, what the view of the portfolio holder is, and maybe yeah. you know get the opportunity to come back because mm. otherwise we won't. Yeah, I think personally that's a good idea, and, they, and it would be possible then for costings for those ideas to be obtained, yeah, yeah. which will um, uh, make, make it easier to discuss. Is that acceptable to the mm -hmm. agree? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Okay. Right, thank you. Thank you very much. I shall depart members if I think. I'm just going to disprove what that was the issue I wanted to discuss. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Item seven. Oh. Just have a minute to get ahead around what we're talking about next. So they're doing. A lot of people are thinking, Jim. Would it be a you know, almost simple thing? And there's there are particular questions that people, you know, having read the report, haven't haven't actually. You know, got an understanding of. Could we not move to the recommendations yeah. and look about whether or not we're in, in agreement with them or not? As a, as a that's yeah. an excellent that's idea. Sure Me and you have been on the same level. My God, it's come, it's coming out. Unnerving, isn't it? Unnerving, isn't it? It is. It is. <laughs> um, <laughs> both of you. <laughs> so I'm just going to confirm that everyone's happy with the parking that we've discussed. Nothing else to add. Right, okay, yeah, I, I wouldn't like to, to, to make any sort of recommendations here. I'd like to get the yeah, no, no, finances. No, um, yeah. Yeah. So I'd like to get what yeah. the costings would yeah. be. Okay, um, all right, Richard, if you make us. Um, good report. Just move straight to recommendations, and we'll, well, I'll run through those quickly see if anyone's got any issues, okay. problems, or additional questions around those as we go. Councillor Lynn. Yes, the Blocks with Different Matters. It took many months to decide what it was going to be called and the number of times people sat in this room and discussed what it was going to be, it went on for now to eternity um, before it came into being. But um, and I've always been pleased that we have it. But um, And I think if you'd actually changed it, um, you've got to look at it. But if you're going to change it, you change it after uh, when 16 comes when the council changes completely. If you want to call it something different, then do it to come in in 16 when the new council's formed. Okay. That's my only comment. We're going to start at the top. Yeah, I was going to go, now go back to, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've, got the, I've got the question now. That is at the top. top. It's not. That's no, not. <laughs> Recommendations. <laughs> the Russian right. District Matters continues in paper format. Oh, I beg of, yes, yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't it's, read tonight. Has anyone got any issues with it not being in paper or in paper? Or? I think it should stay as paper. Yeah. There's an awful lot of people don't yeah. have yeah. computers, I'm afraid. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, recycling of paper. Yeah. so we just go with the recommendation. 
Yeah. Yeah. I think it's excellent because a lot of old people that are you know, not like me now because I've got one. But to be perfectly honest, there are a lot of people, uh, especially older people and that, that keep it to look for the dates mm. of different things. And I think it means. But you need someone to put your potato peelings in. Uh, what? <laughs> no, they go out to the geese. Right, item two, the readership of the online version of RDM is reviewed on an annual basis, which I... Yeah, I think. Yeah. Do, 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 do we know who reads it? I, I don't know how we can review that. We can review the distribution numbers. Yeah, we, um, we can obtain stats from that, I would assume, through yeah. the... Yeah. Um, yeah. Online. 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 Yeah. Cookies. Things. Oh, on the online. The yeah, online. Sorry, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, sorry, there's no test on yeah. the other one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> With the paper version, I've previously asked about auditing, if it's an audit, the readership, and they said it's too too expensive. Yeah. Um, item three, which is the one Councillor Gwynne spoke on, that residents be encouraged to suggest a new name for the paper, Councillor Mason. Chairman, I, 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 I really encourage um, the committee to you know, be positive uh, and, uh, and adopt this recommendation. Um, I'm sorry, um, the name Rotary District Matters has become significantly discredited in the district. It's a little bit of a laughing stock because people actually call it Rotary District doesn't matter. And to be quite honest with you, I am fed up to my back teeth of reading it and hearing it. I think it needs a new name to get rid of that discreditation that has happened. Yeah. I don't know. I thought of it. I, 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 you haven't indicated Councillor the Seekers, but you look like you want to say something. I, I, I don't have any record of, of such comments made to me, put it that way. Yeah. Um, um, I, 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 I cannot uh, accept that uh, that is the widespread case. Um, I, sorry, Councillor Black. Yeah, I mean, in terms of discrediting from, from, from my individual district, I, I haven't heard that phrase that Councillor Mason mentioned. I've heard the phrase once or twice, Rotch the Batters Road, he doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, yes. um, I also get, I, 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 I mean, I asked the Rural of Paris Council, did we did a straw poll there, and a lot of people in Rural don't get it. it you know, he misses out a significant part of the parish in distribution. Well, I don't know. Really? I don't know why, they don't, they don't receive it. Okay. Um, Castle Seeks and Castle Burton. This, this, this is something which needs to be taken up with uh, the Royal Mail in that case then, because they have the contract to distribute it. Um, the main um, problem with uh, the distribution, um, sort of this time last year or whatever, was simply that the contractor was not up to the job. Um, and that's why it went back to Royal Mail, as I recall. Um, if there are those that are still not receiving it, if they need, to, you know, those areas need to be reported to, uh, I forget the name of the officer involved, but... Uh, Laura Bliss. Bliss. It was Laura Bliss, Laura, yeah. I had, yeah. had a sneaky suspicion. She did email known. all councillors. Yeah, I know that she, 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 she has inquired um, on that in the past, and certainly when, I believe, we had some email correspondence in the dim and distant past. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I did forward that query to you, her. Indeed, indeed you did, yes. Um, and uh, as far as I know, that was taken up. Um, she certainly said that uh, it would be taken up with, with the Royal Mail if there were still folks not receiving it. But of course, they can only do, if they deliver one to each household, it doesn't mean that every member of the household sees it. So if someone there decides they're going to bin it before X, Y and Z have seen it, um, <coughs> they'll go down as, oh, we've never seen that. Um, okay. You know, who knows? Right, thank you. Councillor I think, just to literally just talk for a, a very quick minute on this. The, the reason, as part of the working group for this um, project as well. The, the reason the recommendation was to, made to keep it in paper format was because the online readership just isn't successful yet. We're talking about the name as well. However, generally Watch for District Matters as a publication isn't received particularly well by residents. And I think perhaps possibly just because recommendation three is where it is, if you actually looked at four and five, 
you would see that the idea behind this was to refresh the publication as a whole. And that involves making some other changes first and possibly that's why we're suggesting a name change. Because there's no point making the modifications to a publication and then bring it out with the same name. So. Yeah, I, I was actually going to say um, similar to what you said, but I was also going to say when we're talking about distribution, I believe we talked about uh, with the extra um, copies that are printed, distributing them into um, we did, yeah. in, into doctors and uh, other public areas, mm -hmm. so that so that there are more available throughout the district rather than being sat in doors or s but sat in some office. Not it's not being coming through as a recommendation. They're already doing it. They're yeah, already yeah. Doing and that's what I'm worried. Why, why isn't right. it on a recommendation? It wasn't one that came out in the end, but they're already doing it anyway. Mm. I know they're actually putting it out to the some of the GP surgeries in the libraries. Right, okay. Castle um, Spencer, and then Castle Norman. Is there any way... Um, but it's like uh, the free papers. Every so often, you'll get a phone call to ask you whether you've received it, that's and it's all done at random. That's the Could audited. That not be done? That's the audited circulation, which I've been told is very expensive. I I wasn't within this. I've asked oh, I some years ago about do we have an audited circulation figures. They said no, because it is far too expensive, and that's what the telephone calls are. Right. Sorry, quickly, if that's... Yeah, just to touch on that subject, and it, that was raised at the, the review, and mm. councillors, I, I understand on one hand is that RDC staff are asked mm. to confirm whether or not they've received, obviously, living all over the district, and I think councillors, in the last time it was distributed, I think we were all asked to report back. Now, obviously, that's not as comprehensive as employing a company to audit those checks and, mm. and keep everything, but it is a start, and it's a way that... We as councillors and staff at RDC can help identify whether or not certain areas are being missed. That's fine. Yeah. Can we, um, Castle Norman, can we try to talk about the name of the paper? Well, we call it Norman Matters then. <laughs> no, the thing is, uh, no, <laughs> no uh, it's just a question for me. I, I, I'm not being privy to a lot of this stuff that goes on, but um, we keep talking about it's not being you know, received very well, but do we know what of this? document is not being received. Why? I mean, what is it in this package that's not coming across? Is it, is it just the format? Is it the content? Is it the presentation? I mean, I don't know. I know I haven't heard that yeah. yet. What is it that is a, any good? That's the question. I think um, maybe Castor Caitlin could answer that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we, we discuss all elements of this. Clearly the name, as we've heard, gets played upon in, in a couple of different ways. People um, aren't particularly happy at seeing events which have happened. They want to know about events which are going to come about. Right. They want it in a more orderly format. A lot of people cut certain bits out to put on the fridge yeah. for information. But they need to go, oh, well, this is future events. This is something about something else. Very much more organised. It's big and cumbersome. It comes in folded in half quite often and is picked up and shoved with the free papers never to be seen again. It needs to jump out. It, it seems to us to be quite tired and dated and it's got a lot of really good information if you can get the people to read it. And our thoughts was you need to get them to read it, to pick it up and go, oh great this has come through, let's see what's coming up in the district. Not a load of photos of things that have already happened. So it was, a, it was a whole package that are all in, intrinsically linked to the name, the size, the way it's laid out. No, I accept that. Uh, that, that that's obviously, it makes sense. Mm. Uh, where in all of this, uh, who is responsible for rejecting all this, or putting this all together, you know, like to redesign, if you like? What How is, is this worked out? Well, you had an officer that did it. Mm. Well, we've got stuff. I mean, Paul's probably better placed. Right. I, mean, I don't know. Right. Well, no basically, idea. what happens once yes. the recommendations go forward, they go forward to the portfolio holder, who will discuss with the officers. Who's that? Councillor Lucas Gill. Right. To decide which of the recommendations she feels are workable and she wants to implement, and then she'll do that, and there'll be a report to come back portfolio holder decision to sort of link up with the decision or the recommendations you've made and the decisions she's come to. 
on those. So, so what I'm saying is, oh, sorry, so all these recommendations and all these bits of this new document, if you like, does that not come back to review for you to, or your group to have a look and say, mm -hmm. yes, we well, then go on to Jill, or no, it just go to Jill? No. No. no, that's what's done. That's why that's you're here now to sorry. do the recommendations. I'm, I was talking about the content more than anything. Mm. The, no. the redesign, if you like. It doesn't come back to yeah, anybody, so it goes from the other people straight onto the portfolio order without anybody reviewing. Yep. Uh, am I uh, no, on, mate, agreeing yeah. with you? No, am I right? You're, are we both right that just one person in the finish, no, it's just one person that says yay or nay, and the rest of everybody else can go and no, I'll be very ladylike and just say that, in my opinion, what happened years ago, and I'm, I know Chris Gary hit me on the head, but it was yeah. a group of people. Yeah. That um, came with the ideas, and I would like to think if this is going to be changed, it's going to be changed from 16. It should have a right cross party look at it, not just one person. Okay. Um, what are you laughing at? Oh, I, 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 I well, thought not really. I'm, if it's glowing. Don't take that. Sorry, I just want to move on from that. <laughs> <laughs> well, can we take a I think, um, <laughs> think Councillor Burton makes a good point that yeah. items three, four, and five should be considered together. I. I, Councillor Seagull is supposed to be, I just want to, to come in after he's spoken, that's all. If anyone else will speak, then indicate now. Right, you've spoken twice. <laughs> Councillor Seagull. Not right, like that, is it? Um, are we now still considering just item three at this point? I think we should or consider, I think Jane would Councillor still want to have the three, four and five. Made right. a good point that three, four and five are probably connected. I don't know if I want to come back. Councillor yeah. Kaplan agree. No. Yeah. Um, that it's, the, the three of those taken together are redesigning the paper effectively. Chair, Chair, yeah. we, we, see, we seem to have drifted from you know, thinking about rebranding with a new name, which I could suggest one which is uh, Ooh, that district just outside South End yeah. matters um, as an as a, as a, as a equally appropriate one to something different to Rochford district matters, um, which I think sums it up. Um, as it's what it's you know, what it says on the tin. Um, in terms of the uh, content, um, I think there are possible difficulties here in that if we don't include the things which we have achieved as a council, then we'll be accused of ever, never having achieved anything. Um, so I think it's, you know, occasionally we do need to crow about things we have achieved as a council, which by and large, has seen to have been punching above its weight. Um, uh, and in terms of the practicalities of that content, um, I suppose it's possible that putting um, a smaller format with more pages together would enable the sort of fridge magnet requirements to be more easily assimilated, but I'm not quite sure how that would always necessarily fit with the uh, actual variation in content area, shall we say, in terms of um, things which, um, you know, one issue you might have a lot more about wonderful great wakering, um, and the next it would be wonderful raw raw new 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 uh, uh, new town, but um, uh, it, it would be, I think, difficult to be consistent with the total volume um, in each section if you really wanted to make it relatively straightforward to um, put together. And this is going to take quite a bit of office of time. It probably already takes quite a bit of office of time, but it's probably easier on an ad hoc basis within that larger format. Whereas as soon as you start coming down and saying we've got to have X number of pages for each segment, that we've decided to set up, however that is split, whether it's by um, geographic split or topic um, uh, of, of uh, a particular portfolio uh, area, etc. You know, that tends to vary greatly from um, issue to issue. Um, sometimes there are seasonal matters which um, need to be kept in there on a regular basis. Other times, um, you know, a specific problem arises or some new policy is, is introduced, which hopefully we, we, the majority of us will agree on. Um, those are the sort of initial comments I, I have on, on that. Um, 
So I think that probably covers a fair bit of three, four, and five for you. Yeah, I think it does. Um, did Councillor Pepper want to come back? Yeah, that? thanks, Chairman. Um, we weren't for one minute suggesting that we didn't um, sort of blow our own trumpet sort of thing out over our achievements. I think that came about because there was a very lovely photo of the Chairman of the Council at an event that had already happened. And a lot of people never knew about the event to start with. That's right. So the comment was, that's great to see her, but we would have rather have seen last year's chairman at last year's event enjoying it, so we knew to be able to go to this year's. And that it's more the social events going on, the Wild Woods Day, the things like that, even the things that the parishes run, that um, a lot of people want that to be a section. So they can go to their paper and say, right, whatever the front page is, that would change. Right, I know I can get my recycling calendar, I know I can get my calendar of meetings, I know I can find out what is going on completely across the district from uh, fairs, fates, wild woods, etc. And then the rest of the paper, whatever, but they know these would be quite static things. So it wasn't not saying how we done well, it was not having these social things that people then go, that was nice but we didn't know it was going to happen. So you want, you want a, a, basically a calendar section in there? Yeah, <coughs> in a way, because... It, it, what sort of lot, section? Well, a lot of feedback was we didn't know these things were happening. Perhaps we didn't look at the paper, we didn't see it in any detail. We're now focused in, because there's a great photo of the chairman in the woods, but we've already missed it. And that should be more publicising, this was last year's chairman at this great event, and this is coming on in a few weeks' time. Um, because that hones the eye in, where it's just a list, doesn't necessarily. On, on the assumption that it, that it is a um, annually repeated event at the same yeah. date. And a lot of things... Weekend, whatever. Yeah, a lot of things are, aren't they? We have, the, for example, the Wild Woods. That's what brought that, that comment about. And, um, yeah, there's a councillor Lord and then councillor Mason, then councillor King. Yeah, thanks very much. Just on that, uh, I wasn't going to answer but I just cropped up as you were all talking, but to me, I thought the old point, well, well I don't know because I wasn't there at the beginning, but to me I was under the impression that, the, that this paper was really, it's a, it's a, a link between us and our residents and, and it was an informant way of informing our residents, if you like, about us. You know, it's a document about the Rochford District Council, I would have thought. It's not a newspaper, is it? And is it going to be factual or is it going to be personalised? So, I mean, who, do you know what I mean? I mean, is it just going to be a... a a comic, if you like, that tells me all my time tables and all this. So, well, we can have this flexibility of a personality. Anyway, that's just a comment. What I wanted to, what, oh, it was a question I wanted to ask. That was where I started. Um, question four. The size of the newspaper was reduced to 320, but I don't know what that is. Can someone tell me Roughly what that is? Roughly 13 by 10 and a quarter, probably full scat, we reckon. An A4 size. Uh, I think it's probably full it's scat. Larger than that. Is it I'm only mindful. I would say full scat. If, if you're looking at full scat, three times slightly larger than A4. It's 8384 to me. I don't know. Do you know what size a ruler is? Yeah, it's yeah, roughly 32, 320 millimetres is roughly 30. Because the only reason I say that is I'm mindful. Sorry, the only reason I ask that question is I'm mindful that when I put things out, I like to do what we call A3. Simply because some people have a problem reading small print. And um, if you start condensing things down, you start reducing the size of what you're looking at. That was my only comment. That's why I was asking what that is. Yeah, that's a ruler then. A foot. Call it a foot. Roughly. So full scap is probably about the right size. Yeah. 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 Squeeze it okay. down. Not talking about changing the print. Councillor okay. Mason. Um, just to pick up one of your points, Councillor Lorne, uh, Eric Pickles of DCLG, you've probably heard of him, yeah. uh, made it quite clear that um, council newspapers, whatever you call them, may not compete with uh, local newspapers that are paid for. To do so would, would find you probably in, a, in some difficulties. So that's why we can't. Okay. Um, I spoke about number three. I think there should be a new name. Yeah. If it goes well, as Councillor Burton says, with the other changes, then that is another reason to do it. Um, the council's got three press offices. They cost us a fortune. They spend enough time and enough money uh, writing about the achievements, the wonderful achievements uh, of, of our council. Um, they post them to at least 100 places every time that um, they write one, and from the pieces of the media I read, 
um, enough of our achievements are blown uh, at the time when they're made. To re repeat them several months later, I think is a total nonsense. 2016, Councillor Glynn, I don't agree. It should be done now. Um, and in terms of resident engagement, hey, what a really good idea. If you engage the residents in it, they might not think that it's something that doesn't belong to them and it's something being put on them. So I'm happy with three, four, and five, and six. Thank you. Councillor Glynn. Yes, um, I'm on the hospital foundation again, which I came off and then I've come back. And I've always asked every time that the foundation are going to have a public meeting, particularly either at Mill Hall or somewhere in the district, and it's in the future, that it goes into Rockford Matters for people to see that they can go to a meeting of, of the foundation to learn about what goes on at South End Hospital. And I would like to feel there's, there's other organisations like that that can put their advert in um, to say that this is coming, as you rightly say, two or three months in advance. And I feel that if there was a column like that, it would be very useful for a lot of people that don't go out a lot, but they're interested in, for argument's sake, with the hospital, and they come, 80, 100 people come to Mill Hall to that meeting. But that's, that's basically through Rochford Matters. I think that comes under resident engagement, I think, doesn't it? I don't know, it, it, but it, it really is a good thing. It, it and there are through. other organisations too that should be uh, futuristically yeah. put down. I was going to say, did, were you indicating, Councillor, first of all? I was just going to say, the, the recommendations that we're making are nothing to do with content. It's The content's going to stay... I don't think that was a comment. Largely the same. Well, it's, yeah. it's just going to be put into defined sections so readers yeah. can go and focus in on what they want to read and not have to juggle yeah. between sections. I think, it's very, I think Councillor Gill was making the point that about other thing, that about the ability to things being in there, I, I think content would change if residents get involved, personally. But we'll see. Councillor Butcher, then, I'm going to sum up. Yeah, just very quickly, um, I mean, there was a lot of conversation um, uh, in, in our group around this. And one of the main things that, that we sort of came to a conclusion is the editorial group team uh, need to have that final say in, in, in the editorial because there are legal implications. Yeah. There are things that can and can't be done. We didn't want to be saying, you will do this or you will do that. We've got to leave it to the editorial team that we're, we employ to do that job. Okay, thank you. Um, a bit more contentious than I thought that would be. Yeah, can I just Very ask briefly, one, one, one further question? Um, yeah. Where did the 320 by 260 millimetre figures come from? They don't appear to be any sort of standard size of no. um, paper. It I came through see. within the report. I can't remember what page it's on. It's certainly in there. Um, was it the minimum size they were able to do? Basically, we spoke yeah. it. Well, they spoke to the printers, and that was the size they could actually do with the. There's a certain paper size we've got at the moment, and they could cut it to that size without any further cost right. to and, the district. And the reason for that is in eight is six point nine in that it wouldn't then be mistaken for one of the three. It would be distinctly different in size from one of the three papers. I, as I understand it, mm -hmm. correct? Mm. Yeah. And, and Royal Mail would be prepared yeah. to yeah. deliver. And that Royal Mail size. again yeah. would still be able to deliver it. Mm. It, it fitted all the criteria. And it didn't well, cost anything more. It's fine. Okay. So that, that was. Okay. Last one, Councillor Griffin. Thank you. Um, have we looked at any publications issued by other councils? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. That's mm -hmm. been sort of four months ago. Don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we start this? <laughs> Lots, yeah. So do you want to if, that, if you've ever received the <laughs> Southwark uh, um, sort of full colour, uh, probably quarter of an inch or so thick uh, magazine which comes out uh, promoting Southwark and all its business uh, sort of uh, schemes. Um, I'm about to send a Freedom of Information Act to them to find out how much each of those copies cost and how many they issue to get the total cost to them. Because it's got to be fabulously expensive if they're still sending it to me as the former um, finance and resources uh, portfolio holder from over two years ago now. Did you want to comment on that? Or well, not? we looked at numerous publications from neighbouring authorities, um, from the parishes, including the broomstick, which 
Councillor Burton found particularly engaging, didn't you? Um, <laughs> Broom Street. Witches. They are all <laughs> Wimpfer, yeah. but we did look at an awful lot of them. Yeah. I'm going to do a move tonight, aren't I? Well, I'll be able to remember. Um, right, I think we've moved to. Do we need to move on to a vote on this proposal? I think there's some people over. Sorry? One at a time? Or? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we're taking them one at a time, I think just three as we, we go through. So, um, do, do we have agreement on item one? Agreed. 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 I'll go through to say agree, if you disagree, just say you disagree. Item two, agree. Agreed. 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 Yes. Agreed. Item three, agreed. disagree. Agreed. Right. Agreed. So, there's, is that one person disagreeing? Yes. So that's five. Everyone else agrees, yes? Yeah. Item four. Agreed. 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 Right, no one said disagree. Item five. Agree. Agreed. Agreed. Item six. Agree. Okay. Thank you very much. Oh. <coughs> Item eight is um key decision document, there isn't a key decision document at the moment. So that's why you haven't got your papers right, mate. Item nine is the work plan. You have one left to go. Yeah. Feels like it's been two years. Um, so 14th of April is approval of the new reviews committee's annual report. I will be forwarding my forwarding my forward to um, Paul very shortly. I was gonna add, we've now given ourselves car parking in there. Um, just to come back on so that that would be interesting. I'm not gonna let anything else be added to that. Um, I'm not sure if it's the appropriate make the place to mention this, but we are also ICT report. ICT report we'll be looking at. Oh that's yeah. The IC I've lost my page, sorry. I'm in the wrong place. So then we've got the ICT report to come back, haven't we? Yeah. I find it. There it is. I don't know if this hit. Um so all the other ones have been done and we'll have the report to come back. From home business, hopefully, or a report, some sort. So maybe. Um, yeah, depends how you want to decline that one. With well, the information they're going to forward to you. I think we're asking them back now, aren't we? Who's that? Well, it was only an hour ago. Do you know? I thought we'd decided I think, to... I think we, we obviously got, got answers to some things, yeah. which of course, you know, can be, can be recorded. There, there are other things that they're going to provide us information. Um, I'd hope they wouldn't just send me an email as individual members of, of the committee, but they go through, through Paul um, to, to incorporate in a, a more overall yeah. um, review of the facts that have been found. I think that those facts that have been found need to come back to this review committee so that we can decide what we do next. Yeah, and I'd like that for the full team. I think it's what I'll say. Yeah. Bit of a challenge, maybe. But oh, that's wrong. So I've got it quite full already, the full team, on that basis. Right. Um, I'd also like people to put their minds, which I've also mentioned to other people, but their minds what they think should be put on. I know we're not, myself or anybody here might not be on this review committee next year, but we normally put forward issues which should be, we think should be being considered next year. Okay. So, Councillor Glynn. Yes, 219.3. If we don't do something about potholes, I'm a Dutchman. Yeah, that's my failure. It's what? That's my failure. The and, it, and the potholes that are, are, are on unadopted road mm -hmm. is a disgrace. We all pay our fees and everything else, and we get nothing. And I think what? it's something that should come up. Yeah, um, sorry, Councillor Mason. Sorry. Um, Can you repeat that, please, Councillor Glynn? Right. Can you? I didn't catch quite what you were saying. 
the uh, about potholes yes. on on an unadopted highway. The people that live in unadopted highway areas still pay their rates and taxes the same as everybody else. Yeah, and the reason that they are unadopted is that the development has not been paid for to the standards required by... Well, as the Essex development County took Iowa place Eastern. 100 years ago, it's a bit different. I think that's a discussion for outside this meeting. Will, I can assure you, yeah. County, yeah. County Highways will not look at taking on unadopted highways until they are made up to a right. standard which meets their priority. This is a separate yeah. issue, and, it, and it's not what we're discussing now. Right. Sorry, did someone indicate that I missed this, Councillor Mason? Chairman, have you looked at project teams on the back yet? Yes, yeah, so I was just going to go to those, because they're on the very, very back page. Well, that's right, I wasn't sure whether they'd yeah. return the page or not. So we have... Um, uh, they, well, the ICT contract is coming back in April, as I said, which includes the iPad issue and um, third-party software. Um, Russia District Matters has reported Builder Control has not yet reported, which I have a problem with. Um, we are... I might suggest the Building Control team could meet. I'm not sure what the thoughts around here are on that. I'm not sure we're going to achieve anything much. It, it is now in a position where we, in my opinion, we could now look at Building Control with a view to putting forward a recommendation to how it should proceed. But obviously that would not be done within this council period. It, it wouldn't be able to report until after May the elections. Any thoughts, right, Councillor Dean? Is there anybody left in building control? Yes. Yes, was the answer, is that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but the manager obviously is has gone. Gone. always going yeah. under the reorganisation. That's what I mean. Yeah. So how can we know if there's nobody there? So I presume that something's going to happen within the reorganisation. Yeah. And that could be something that this, the building control, or this panel could report back to. Sorry, Councillor Mason. Chairman, thank you. Um, I, I've been rather disappointed that um, I almost would say a level of cooperation um, with this particular project team has, has not been forthcoming, notwithstanding I know the interven interventions you've made, and the interventions in particular have made, been made with our chief executive, and I've been hugely disappointed that um, a, a more positive response to the project team's questions hasn't happened. And more particularly, the Chief Executive has more or less declined to come before the review committee and update us, even in exempt. So I, I feel we should keep this on review committee um, and not in any way diminish it, even though it may be carried forward, to ensure that review committee does receive uh, an appropriate um, response from the Chief Executive or the Office of Machinery generally uh, on, on the question. Um, I think it should come back to review committee even if it's not in this this cycle yeah. of its meetings. Okay. Just carry forward. Okay. Anyone else wants to speak on those? So that's the last thing on the agenda. Thank you, Thank you very much. Well, we're going to have 10 minutes. So. Well, I'll let you carry on.